there, my lovely legionnaires. How are we doing today? I'm sorry that took a minute. I was trying to do something funny and it didn't work. <laughs> Push a car? Jesus. Danica, you're in your new house! I'm so happy! I'm so happy you're in your new place! Hello, Ontario! Hey, how's it going? Our slot's still open. Okay, I was just about to say, so today's another commission stream. My slots are just going to be perpetually open until uh, MomoCon. I'm trying to save some money so that I can have money to spend. And that is fair. So uh, I'll be doing, I'll be, like I said, I'll be doing commission streams uh, every Wednesday as long as I have enough art, as long as I get enough commissions to warrant it. This is Lyo. No! Uh, this is, so our first is, uh, Brianu, who is a friend of, uh, our dear Mortis. You'll be hearing from me, this is a threat. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. Uh, no, Brianu is a friend of, uh, our dear sweet Mortis. Of the love of my life. He does happen to also be a lion. But that's, but that's just a coincidence. So Brianu asked for artwork of himself and his lion companion. Hello, Karez. Welcome, welcome. So our commissions today were from Brianu. Uh, and then this one and this one from TP. Because if there's a will, TP will commission me to draw his wives. His and you wives. Know, and you know what? I have fun doing it every time. <laughs> Kel Surprise. We're gonna start with Brianna. I think every one of them are, these are waist up shaded. Brianu specifically said he wanted, like, him and his lion, uh, taking a selfie together. Expect me again for your services. Yeah, yeah! I was gonna say, I, uh, a couple of people have expressed interest, and I think at this point I'm just waiting until payday rolls around for a few people. Yeah, I'm, I'm considering I just need to figure out A, what I want more than anything else, but... That was from Thundercats, not Transformers. Probably both. The old man does like both. I know the... The, like, his, like, main Sona design is more Thundercats. But I know that Convoy comes from the, uh, the Transformers character. That's all I know. Because, like, Convoy is basically, like, you know, is basically the Japanese equivalent for Prime. Because, like, you know, Convoy, like a convoy of trucks. Yeah, that makes sense. It's kind of funny because, like, Japan, it's like Lyo, not Leo. Mm -hmm. Brianna was surprisingly fun to draw. I was a little worried. 
but because his design was so complicated, I wasn't gonna... I wasn't gonna like drawing it, and then I was simply wrong. I mean, since the person the not gonna lie, you do have a somewhat complicated design with like, you know, the antlers or the eyes and all yeah, that. Yeah, I... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say complicated, more intricate. Yeah, that was one of the... Th it's like I said before, it's why my... the original pass of my design had to change so much. Because again, originally I had moose antlers, which is a way big, which is way harder to draw. But then I realized that I would have to draw it repeatedly, and I was like, eh. But my antlers are a pretty simple shape. Okay, Google, set a timer for two minutes. I suppose it's the yeehaw time, it man. Is yeehaw time. You are gonna have to, uh, unfortunately, I mean, Fortunately or unfortunately, I don't know how y'all feel about it, but, uh, you are gonna have to listen to mouth noises later. Uh... Because... Burke and Justin are out, but they said that- they were like, Are you okay with having a little bit of a late lunch? And I said, Alright, that depends. What kind? And they were like, Well, we're gonna go get Jimmy John's, and I'm like, Oh, fuck yeah, I'll wait. <laughs> So you will be hearing me munching and crunching on my deli sandwich. The ASMR. Yeah, yeah. I would, like, I... One of my, like... I don't know if it's the autism. It might be. But, like... One of my go-tos for, like, lunch food is... God, I fucking... I fucking love a good deli sandwich. I, like, I wish... And, like... You just, you don't get the right, like, bread. You know what I mean? To make them at home. It's, it's the right amount of texture. Like, the right flavor and the right texture. Like... Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, there's just a shit ton of stuff that, like, goes into it being a good sandwich. And, like, every goddamn time, Justin's like, well, we have the stuff. We have the stuff to make. And I'm like, I know we do, but it's not gonna be as good and you know that. It's it's the presentation. It's also kind of like the vibe. Like like there's so many people who like you know recommend like you know, whatever you go to like a big city or something like that, and someone recommends like a certain bodega sandwich. Like sure, it's probably a really good sandwich, but you can also say that they have some kind of like emotional attachment, so that flavor gets a bit better, you know? Yeah, always. The pla the place that you went with your mom like to celebrate your fucking graduation from high school is going to be better than gourmet food sometimes. Okay, Google, stop. Like, it's just, it's just kind of the way that it is, you know? Yeah. I don't have the deli magic. It's true. Turkey sub with Dijon mustard and lettuce and red onions. Ah. I remember because uh, when my friend got married, I went to LA for his wedding, and he kind of basically like most of us were coming from like all over the place to see him because he wanted to make sure like we had like the best LA experience. So we basically met up with everybody at this like really nice deli, and we were just like all everybody all grouped up at a table and just like everyone was just like going through the menu and seeing what was there. I think I had like a. A Philly cheese steak and like a, like, a, like an old fashioned root beer, like straight out of the old glass bottle. Oh, it's the good shit. The good shit. Also, listen, I may have uh, fucked my stomach up yesterday, and that totally has nothing to do with the entire like f fucking party sized bag of Lay's potato chips that I demolished in 48 hours. Now we're talking like regular Lay's, yeah. baked Lay's, no regular, barbecue. Regular, huh? regular Lay's. Oh, fair, fair. I, I remember there's like a, I recently discovered that there is like this special sweet and salty popcorn mix that you can find. And it is just like, it is like the perfect combination between sweet and salty. And I just devour it en masse. Mm -hmm. like, you, like you can get like an $8 bag that's about the size of a large pillow. And I can burn through that an entire day. God, you're so right. I miss the days of my youth where I could eat, like, where I could eat 11 slices of my grandma's, like, homemade fudge and not feel a single thing. And now, if I have to make sure that I 
don't fucking eat too many. Now I have to make sure that if I eat more than the bog standard designated amount of potato chips, I'll die. I hate this. I hate being 30. Uh, before we were youth, now we're just the old- now we're just the old aunts and uncles. Ugh. I'm not quite before beekeeping we... age, unfortunately. No, 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 I'm- I'm- I'm at- I'm at the age where I'm just have- I have two nieces and two nephews, and I am just there to be the uncle that just steps in whenever the parents get tired. It should tell you something that, like, uh, one of my close friends is getting married this year, from the sounds of it. Uh, and every fiber of my being wanted to be like, oh, I mean, are you sure we're so young? And I'm like, we're not. Like, no, oh, I'm 30. I'm so aggressively 30. <laughs> I don't- oh My god, I, I, I just... am the age range for close enough now. Ugh! I just, I don't- It feels- like, I don't feel 30. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a thing, because, like, it's also a little bit because, like, you lost a couple of years because of COVID. Yeah. I mean, I think everybody did. Exactly. I just, I don't feel 30. But I keep looking at it, and I'm like, God, I am. I think it's also plus, like, the environment that people were in and how people have handled it, because, like, you see certain groups of people like, Oh, yeah, I got a downbeat down the house. I got a kid coming. I got all these things. Oh, great. I'm looking for work. Yeah. I guess it's just because, like, I haven't... I just, I just don't feel like I've changed very much. So, I think there comes a certain point in some people's lives where they've either mature to a point they don't really need to anymore or they're just kind of like at a stage that they just kind of like just it's like tweaks along the way it, it's some people i just want to how do i say this like some people age like pokemon games and some people age like call of duty i suppose that's true the passage of time is nothing but pain it's so true time Stop is fake remote. except for the meat Reality is illusion. The universe is a hologram. Bye, gold. Bye. I think the other part of it is that, like, I'm, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm the way that I am, TM, but, like, again, I just, I don't, a lot of people have said stuff like that to me, that they're like, you just, you haven't changed. And I'm like, I don't know. I, there, in some ways, I know I have. Like, like, there's some ways that, like, I've demonstrably changed. I'm very different than how I used to be. But, like, I feel like in a lot of ways I haven't. And I don't necessarily have a problem with that. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's also, like... <laughs> there's also the fucking elephant in the room, which is the, like, I didn't think I'd live to 30, so... Now that I'm here, I don't know what to do with myself. Yeah, I think that's the, kind of like the thing, because like, with like a lot of our youth, it's just growing with like, I see me doing this, and then like, okay, now what? Well, I also have depression and frequent ideations, so that's a... So oh, that's... yeah, uh, as someone with also depression. <laughs> yeah, so when I say I didn't think I'd make it to 30, <laughs> but like, I don't know, I'm I'm glad I am where I am, and I'm, I think for the most part, I can comfortably say that I'm very proud of the person I am, of all of I the, mean, uh, of all of the changes I've made in my life to be where I am now. I mean, not to overly congratulate you, but you know, you are doing well, you are creating content, you have a loyal group of people who support you, you have fans who appreciate your work and acknowledge your talent, you're still growing as an individual, but you are still at a point where you are comfortable. Yeah. I mean, th the thing I'm trying to reconcile now uh, is there's that part of me that's like my, 
my life as a professional, I guess, is the best way to put this, this next part, is, like, feels half over. So there's that part of me that's like, I'm just, there's not enough years in my life to do all of the things I want to do. And start playing time in a bottle. Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to not think about that. Uh, because the existential dread will uh, kill me. But, you know, we're, we're neither here nor there. It's fine. Yeah, I, I, I feel you there. But my depression kind of had a, a similar mindset, but a little bit bleaker. But yeah, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. <laughs> no, I'm stoked for you. I'm stoked that you're in your new place. Blue, hello. Hey, Blue. Is this the is this the stream where we give motivation to Heaton? <laughs> I mean, if you want to, you can give motivation <laughs> to me too if you want. Things here, did have, get a little here, existential somebody... there. Sorry. No, you know what? I overheard, I did overhear that bit the moment I turned my headphones on. I'm like, oh, Jesus freaking Murphy. Another moment of, the, of I can relate to this person on a drastic level. Because I too fear the whole, oh, I won't be able to do, I don't have enough years in my life to do this, this, and this. Yeah, that's the, that's the big uh, one for me. Is the like, Yeah. is the... Especially because of the way that my brain is, my, like, I've, I've historically, I don't know if you know this about me, a few of you probably in chat do, but, like, I have this, um, I've perpetually had a problem with racing thoughts, so I'm, I'm always thinking of new stuff. My brain's always, uh, either working through something that I haven't finished or is giving me an idea for something new. So I, I always feel like there's more being added to a list, but I just don't have the, um, I don't have the time. So you, time. so in other words, you too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I want to, I don't know. I want to, I've talked about it before. I want to take some time on, like, the main channel to talk about some of the things I want to do. So that even if, like, the worst occurs, then... then something comes of it, but, like... I don't know. We'll see. Speaking of emotional support liquid... <laughs> we need more <laughs> existential talks. I mean, we can talk... We can talk about nihilism. We can talk about the futility of human suffering if you want, but, like... That sucks. <laughs> I can I mean, I'm pretty up. sure, like, I mean, I think, like, existential crises or that is kind of something to do, like, off stream so you don't bum out the rest of chat. So. Yeah, I'm like, we can, I'm like, listen, I know that chat seems to really like it when I get introspective, but, like, for real, I can, I cannot talk about how my brain is perpetually trying to kill me for, like, 20 minutes, if that's cool. <laughs> No, I feel I. Well, it's weird because I can feel I. I feel like I'm being able to know that pretty well since I've also had moments where it's like, um, just anxiety. Yeah, it's anxiety, anxiety part of it. Anxiety and depression, just a cocktail that just mixes together. It mixes well, but it mixes so well it's horrible. They're they <laughs> call them comorbidities for a reason. You can't like, tell where know. one ends and the other begins. Sorry, continue. Yeah, no, I, that's that is true. Because I may not know. I've never been diagnosed with depression yet, but I've had moments where it feels like I might as well have it. Yeah, it's because the symptom. Looking up the symptoms, and I'm like, yeah, this sounds vaguely like it, but I don't know if I want to know if I have it. <laughs> sort that's of thing. that's a big one. I want to. That's something I want to like touch on is for because somebody posted on Twitter and I, I chose to take them in good faith but well who knows it's Twitter um, but they were talking about they, they were asking why people um, 
want labels for things. Like, why do you want to, why do, why do you like to find yourself with these labels? And it's, for some people, it's, I, I get it. It's a really, like, um, it's really intimidating to, like, because for some people, it's the case of, like, I, I, they have the comfort in the not knowing, right? And I think that that's totally fair and valid. Unless you're, like, unless you have, like, cancer or something and you're gonna die, then in which case, <laughs> live, cope, I guess. But, like, but no, like, when it comes to, like, a mental health thing, I get, I 100% get where that fear comes from. Uh, because that was what I was afraid of at first. I, I was really... I had a lot of fear and anxiety about, like, what that, what those words entail, you know, what they mean for you in the long run. And, like... It's the fear of being perceived a different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or people saying that, like, that's not real, or you don't have that, or, like, no, it's just, you're just stressed, or, oh, no, you're just sad, or, oh, you need to get over this. Right, it's, it because, like... I I had the benefit that like only well that's not true. I did have my I did have my diagnoses questioned once, but <laughs> oh. why doesn't he even see male therapists anymore? Um <laughs> uh, listen, I'll tell this story again, because I think it's funny. So like in retrospect, it wasn't funny at the fucking time, but it's funny now. So, I listened. <laughs> I was, I was 16. Uh, I'd been in therapy uh, for about half my life at that point. And I was seeing somebody new. And he took down all of my symptoms. And I talked to him about, oh, you know, since I, so important, since I was like eight, ten years old, I was talking about, uh, wanting to die. Uh, I didn't say the word die because I didn't know that, obviously. I wasn't that complicated and I wasn't talking about, like, hurting myself, but I was- Just in... more like, what's, what's the point, what's the point of existence kind of thing. Well, when I, when I was little, I told, what, what got me in therapy the first time was I told my mom that I wanted to disappear. And she said, what does that mean? And I told her, like, I want to not exist anymore. I want to go to bed and I don't want to wake up. And my mom was like, okay, we're going to put you in therapy. Because <laughs> this is not an, an emotion that a child should be experiencing. So they did. And I, I had wonderful therapists up until this man. So this had been a recurring problem throughout my entire life. That's so It's so important that you know that. And he... I tell him all of this, and he looks at me, and he nods, and he listens, and he goes, Well, you're a girl, and you're 16. It's hormonal, and wiped out years of diagnoses and put me on birth control. Oh. I was 16. <laughs> I am just making the, but just the boy expression right here because just like so a fun a fun little fact a fun little fact that i don't know if any of you know uh when you have uh things like depression uh an anxiety disorder or when you have depression that's a fun funky fresh thing called a mood disorder uh you know what gets worse when you're pregnant Mood disorders. You know what birth control makes you think you are? Pregnant! <laughs> so I was sick to my stomach, crying and fucking miserable all the time for years, for like months. And then I just fucking lied. I started lying to my parents and just stopped fucking taking it. I was like, no, I'm not doing this anymore. This is making me feel worse. It was terrible. I was miserable. I can't believe it. He, I was fu So the funny thing was, I didn't realize like how fucked up that was for many a year because like I just stopped seeing him eventually. 
Uh, I realized once again how fucked up it was when uh, I went into group therapy as an adult and I told that story because they asked me about my my medical history. And I was like, oh yeah, you know, this, this, that, and the other. And I told them about that. And the two lady doctors who were there for group looked at me, put their clipboards down, and went, you were how old? And I said, like, 16? <laughs> and they looked horrified. And I, I had to look at them and be like, was that not... Nor and they go, no! They're like, who the fuck would have seen your symptoms? And I'm like, I know! <laughs> <laughs> he was weird. I don't... Fucking, he was the one who introduced me to Jenna Marbles. I don't... He was weird. He was a weird dude. I don't think that he was like dangerous or anything like he never said or did anything weird to me other than that like he but he was just weird he was just a weird guy mm. i don't know i i remember him i guess not fondly but like i i sure do remember him bemusedly i suppose is a better word how are you doing i'm doing i'm okay I'll, I'll be fine, I guess. I don't know. I'm, I'm tired. I'm in kind of a, I'm in kind of a weird emotional spot right now. I'm working through it. I'll be fine. I'm not gonna get parasocial with you, stream. I see you. Uh. Oh, this is uh, this is Blue Paintsy. This is the the lovely artist who drew my uh my background. And the other background that he still fucking owes me. Where's my fucking other background, Blue? I knew that was gonna be brought up. <laughs> I'll shake you violently. No, I'm. No, I'm still. I'm still on it as we speak. I'm actually in the. Pro I think I'm in the last few bits of the shading bit. Poggers. So it's pretty much on the verge of being done. Except, although I need, still need uh, more suggestions from you, actually, because. Oh, okay. Uh, not not to, not to spoil it for chat or anything or for stream, but there are two, one, two, three instances where I need some sort of reference for like a figurine. Oh and, yeah, I can do that. Like pictures. I got you. I got yeah, you. I can do that. I still I actually because I still need to like implement more like actual line art mm -hmm. into this. Gotcha, gotcha. Because other than those other than those things, all I need to do is the shading, and it's pretty much done. Pug. Okay, I can do that. Where's yeah. the background, Lebowski? <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's but honestly, it's good that we were we were talking about the whole like um, thinking of what like so many having so much on the mind and trying to have so many things to get done, but only so little time to do it. That's been pretty much me with like character art, right? Yeah, because I actually because I haven't drawn, I haven't actually posted anything since last year. Oh God, yeah. Because because I've been in this. I kid you not, I've been in this kind of rut where, okay, so like to, to give context, I was originally planning to post something in like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm -hmm. Like I had a piece thought out, it was in, it was being drawn, but it was around this time where I was still trying to get used to Krita because I migrated to a new computer late last year because mm -hmm. my old one was like becoming too obsolete to update. So, <laughs> me trying to do uh, experimenting while being able to do what I used to do in Photoshop didn't exactly go the way I planned it. Oh? So, discouragement ended up kicking in severely during the holidays. Yeah, I get that. That was and, my, that was my and... switch from Psy to CSP. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, I actually did download recently, like the 3.0 version. I keep meaning to, and then I keep fucking forgetting. I'm just so used to my fucking rut. I don't know. <laughs> I want to change well, my the... tools again! This is cringe! Yeah, 3.0 was recently on sale for like 60% off, so I'm like, you know what? Considering that this is the program that I've seen everybody else here on like these Discord servers that I'm a part of, like, use this one over other programs. I'm like, 
Yeah, I might, like, I might as well take the advantage while they brought back the uh, the one-time purchase license. So I'm like, okay. So I have it now. I haven't actually, like, drawn anything with it yet because I'm still doing your your thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, was... I'm, 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 I'm in the mindset... I've always had the mindset... Well, I don't know if it's healthy or not. Of the whole finish one thing before starting the next. Oh, God, yeah. I... And welcome welcome to another uh fun episode welcome to another fun episode of uh heaton show us your works in progress there are no works in progress <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i don't do works in progress i work on them until they're done because i'm a freak yeah no similar pretty much same vibes in this case because like I've always feel I've always feel like wanting to do more like doodles and such to like get a get a idea of the large large space scape that is my imagination mm -hmm. and like show people like the stuff that I think is like oh hey this is this is the thing that I want to do next but I always feel guilty in starting something new when I still have this other thing that I'm supposed to be working on and finishing. Yeah. That it's like, oh, I can't freaking, I shouldn't do this because I have to do this, do this like, eh. Yeah, I have, oh, I have like, I have so many projects that aren't finished, but like, I don't leave individual art pieces unfinished. I just, I can't. It drives me bonkers. I have like four or yeah, five I... projects that I've started. Oh, speaking of uh, another art video that's in the works soon, I had to, um, for for my own peace of mind, because uh, suffice it to say, I'm going to be doing like a fan thing. Um, given that this person is like a more independent creator, uh, I wanted to. I wanted to get their permission to do something like this because I was like, oh, I don't want like I don't want you to feel like put on the spot, you know. But I got I got my permission, so that so I can finally start working on that in earnest, which I'm stoked about because it was something I it's been rattling around in my fucking pea brain for like a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, like I'm I don't know I also like my. My relationship with my work is really unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I don't know. I, I always feel better when I've got like when I'm making forward momentum, which is why a lot of my depressive spirals result from like an injury or if something else is happening in my life, like something that distracts me from where I'm going, from making progress. That shit like really fucks me up. I getcha. And I'm I'm trying to be less like um I mean for lack of a better word annoying about it. But like I don't know. I feel like I feel like I've gotten simultaneously better and worse at like processing shit like that. I don't know. I think I don't like that the big spikes for me La I don't like that they last so long and I don't like that there's nothing I can do about them. Yeah. Like the most like the most frustrating thing that everyone around me who has to fucking put up with me during that time period uh keeps telling me is they keep asking me is like, "Well, well what can we do to make you feel better?" And I'm like, "Nothing." And they're like, "Oh, you're being and they're thinking like, "Oh, sh She's being dramatic. They don't know what they're talking about. And I'm like, no, actually there is nothing. Like I don't, like I don't have a thing that makes it, I don't have something that stops the bleeding. I just have to wait until it scabs over, which yeah, that's, sucks. And that's the thing that some people don't understand is the fact that these things take time. They need to be, you know, processed and absorbed properly with a lot of my time, I just have the, oh, just go out for a walk. Oh, just have something else. Oh, just do this. You'll, you'll get over it and see. Like, that's not how it works. Uh, take, step away from your computer for a little bit. Maybe just not staring at a screen all day will, like, refresh your mind a little bit. It's like, yeah, I, well, sometimes that works, but there's only so many times you can do that, and then it just becomes an excuse. And especially for, like, people like us who 
do a lot of their work through this, who main way to contact people that, you know, their friends, their close relationships is through these computers. It does, it's a little bit much to say, you know, step away from it for the day. Just, I yeah, mean, just yeah, stop. Yeah. What are you, what are you talking about? Like, stop. And it's like, what, what, what? what? And I it's mean, like, what? Like, and then, and then you also get the, the response like, well, what are we supposed to do? Like, how are we supposed to help you out? It's like, well, that's the problem. We don't know. That's, yeah, the, the, the profound one for me that's like, that's always been difficult is that the people, obviously the people who are around me who care about me are like, we want to help. We want to make it better. And I, it sucks having to look them in the eyes and be like, nah. <laughs> how do you, how do we help? You don't. Uh... Like, you're not gonna convince me that my way of thinking is wrong, and you're not gonna talk your- you're not gonna talk my brain out of this depressive spiral, so tough titties, I guess. And I feel like such a dick. Yeah, but you need to be able to stand up yourself, because I've had, like, parts with him, like, you know, you've been having these panic attacks every time there's something stressful, like, you, you, you doing it to get out of things. I'm like, no, I'm doing it because I'm stressed and having anxiety attacks. And that's why it's happening. It's just happened the fact that you happen to be causing these things. Do you want? Do you want a great story? Go ahead. A good, a good heathen story. I, I like great stories. So, uh, <laughs> the first time I went to Momocon uh, was the first time I'd ever gone to like a big convention of that nature alone. Like it was, it was really the first big trip I'd ever taken alone. So I was, I was with friends, I was with, uh, Caden and crew, and we were hanging out and everything was great. And I think it was around day, like, two, day two, maybe day three, I started to get really overstimulated. Uh, as is my wanted way. Uh, and I started to get really anxious and embarrassed because every time... I went on these kinds of big trips with, like, my parents, or with, air quotes, friends I'd had at the time. Uh, I'd been made to feel bad for, like, for needing to stop, for needing to take breaks. It was like, oh, do we have to? Like, can you go back by yourself? You know, this, that, and the other. Because I felt, and I felt bad every time. And my parents would always say that it was me trying to get out of doing something I didn't want to do or whatever. So I so I have a lot of guilt about like uh when my physical and mental health dips while doing something with the people around me, right? It almost it it's one of those situations where you feel like it becomes an unintentional crush. Crutch. Well, it, part of the, partly that, but also like yeah. hi. I hello. I had my mother say to me during an argument that uh, that I was a burden. So, you know, it is what it is. I, I totally don't have trauma to process. Anyway, uh, but I was, I was just really upset. And I was freaking out, and I felt really awful. And I, I did what I always do, which is, I did it until I physically was ready to die, because if I wasn't breaking down, then my distress was not taken seriously. So I was, like, miserable, and I I had wrung all of it out of it I could, and I texted Kaden, and I'm like, God, you, you gotta take me back. I can't do this. I'm, I'm losing it. And he was like, cool, no problem. And he grabs me, and he takes me back, and I'm expecting, like, I'm expecting him to be, like, pissed that he had to stop, that he had to come get me. I was expecting to be told, like, like I was in the middle of something, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And he says to me, he's like, are you doing okay? And I looked at him and I went, huh? And he goes, are you, like, are you all right? And I was like, no, how did you know? And he goes, you're like really pale. And I'm like, I'm overstimulated. I just, I need, to, I need to be in quiet. I need to go back to my room for a little bit. And he's like, do you want me to go with you? And internally I was like, this is a fucking trap. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna get so mad at me and I was like well you don't have to if you don't want and he looks at me and he puts a hand on my shoulder and he's like if you don't think you'll be safe by yourself I'll go back with you and I was 
like, yeah, please, for like a little bit. And he goes, yeah, I could probably use a sit down too, honestly. And we went back and we sat and we talked. And when a panel that he wanted to go was uh, coming up, he was like, are you sure you're going to be okay? I was like, yeah, I'll be all right. And he's like, are you positive? I'm like, yeah, I just, I'm probably going to take it. I'm probably going to have a snack and take a nap. And he's like, all right, cool. He's like, text me as soon as you want to come back. I told everybody else that you'll be here so they can be quiet if you're going to take a nap. And the first thing that everyone said when they came back was they asked me, like, are you okay? Did you do all right? And I started crying. <laughs> yeah. I started crying. And then it happened again when I was with, uh, when Brooke, Justin, and I, when I first moved in, I, I had something similar happen. My fucking physical problems flared up and there was something we were supposed to do that day and I started crying and I was sobbing because I was so used to like it always being a fight so speak of the imp and he appears yay only good one things second, let me, let, I, I know one second let me get my headphones better headphones up but I was I was okay but he, uh, then they they too were like they were like they put their hands on me and was like he if you don't feel well, go take a nap. It's fine. You're gonna be living here for the foreseeable future. You're you're okay. I'm like, are you sure? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, but you wanted to. And they're like, yeah. And we can do it when you don't feel like you're going to die. And again, I lay down and cried. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're talking about the the time, the first time you took a trip here. Yeah, I was, cause it and it just every time. It's how I know I'm just in a better, like, safer place is that every time I do something with the people I care about and like my fucking shit physical body decide my fucking meat suit decides to horribly fail me uh the people around me have been so caring and considerate and it makes me so happy and I love all of you so much I love you too like like it, the, I I remember that trip of like you complimenting my shitty PT cruiser, us singing, <laughs> us singing. At, I'm starting to miss it more and more every day. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, us singing uh, freaking cover songs on the way over to my place as we were about to play. Uh, we played Detroit. Yeah. We played Detroit. It was so. It, you got approved by Zelda with a singular. I was booped. It was. I was blessed. <laughs> and but like, what what happened? Like, did he tell why it happened? Why you were like overheated? Oh, that was a different thing. I was talking about Momocon, but yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it yeah, was, yeah, yeah. No, So yeah. it was my okay. So that one, in fairness, that shutdown was one hundred percent my fault. So what? Well, I, what happened I, I, was I, no, it, it was my fault. I I was stupid. I should have known I, better. I, I'm I'm, I'm going to give you a small bit of defense here. Not everybody is used to southern weather. You're from the north. It's fine. Yeah. Like we, and not everybody realizes the simple rule. Whenever it's a really hot day, You're, okay. Word of advice for people who ever come to a really hot area: do not chug ice water so I was, oh no so i was really overheated because we'd been in we'd been in caden's car all morning and in that listen i love that little pt it, cruiser but that shit had no ac that it shit had, had no AC. ac we had the windows rolled down i was sweating buckets i was fucking miserable and so we got we get back and i was uh we get back to scarlet's or i guess this uh yeah we get back to scarlet's and fucking uh, her mom, absolutely wonderful woman, by the way, uh, nice gave me just a nice tall glass of ice water and was like, here, honey. And I, instinctively, because I was very sweaty and very hot, uh, just slammed, like, a whole tall glass of ice water. I, I chugged that shit. I slammed it in one sitting. Uh, and then I went to sit down <laughs> and got so sick to my stomach. Hey, did you know that if you're overheated or like uh, super cold, that rapidly changing your body temperature uh, will make you like you. suffer? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That, that, it, oh, no, yeah. I, I remember it a little bit differently because I remember it was like we went out. It, it's like it, you. No, it's like I, I came by to pick you up. You, Stephen, and 
I think Scarlet. Yeah. And we were all we were all about to go run out and just like check out more of the city. And oh yeah, we stuff. were leaving, and I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna be sick. <laughs> I, yeah, that it's like you drank the water before you left. Now, mind you, if you want to chug water before going out because you need hydration, room temperature, room temperature, or water, ch yeah, or chilled by the like the little the thing that that's connected to. Uh, to the fridge right that's fine uh because at that point it's like it's regulating with the room and you're just getting your hydration in if you're gonna drink ice water and i'm saying this as advice nurse that bitch you yeah. gotta nurse ice water in the south you have to i'm a fool uh, i didn't know any better i i was so i was new i was fresh i was still a yeti at the time how was i to know well, now you know. Now I know. Yeah. Do, 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 do. After experiencing how many summers now here? Uh, this Two, would three. This would be three, because okay. I I would count the one that I was where I visited. Uh, as so this would as an experience. Yeah. So this would be three. Yeah. Fucking okay. I wanna I wanna talk about this because I thought this was so fucking funny. So yeah, yeah, when yeah. I when I was moving out, uh, my family in their weird attempt to dissuade me from moving out. Uh, specifically and repeatedly was like, well, you can't, you know, you're, you, what are you gonna do in, like, a hundred degree weather outside? And I would turn and I would look at them and quirk an eyebrow and go, the same thing I do when it's negative 40 here! Not fucking go outside! It's, it's I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna say this right now, uh, the benefit of modern day society is the easy access of air conditioning. <laughs> I was about to say, like this fucking this fucking house is central is central air. Mm, I'm not fucking go house. yeah, I'm not I, I don't go outside. The same thing I yeah. do when it's hot here or when it's fucking cold there. I'm not go I'm just not gonna go outside. But just fine. And also, like, uh that so fun fact, you know we have like summer breaks and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. You know why we have summer breaks? Mm hmm Okay, so the standard excuse is so so kids can work on the farm with their parents. Like, no, the real reason is back whenever it was like the the early 1900s and late 1800s, central air conditioning did not exist. Yeah, you would die. So they had to shut down the schools because the kids would not be able to live well. So they would not be able to survive in their own classrooms, which is another reason why we should abolish uh, summer breaks and turn them into a one week break like we do with spring break and fall break. Uh, kids would be able to graduate early and would not lose any intelligence over the summer. And yes, you can lose intel, you can lose information over long periods of time. I dare you to do calculus. Um, it do be like that. Thank uh, thankfully, I could at least do at least a little bit of long division still. But, but I haven't done math in Why is chugging ice water a bad thing in a hot place? That explains why I got sick during the heat wave. Yeah, don't do that. Don't. If you're if you're dehydrated in general, you shouldn't slam your yeah. beverage. You should nurse it because your yeah. your body will just explode. Trust me. Uh, you it, it's the the thing to go back in the Momocon thing though. I remember I remember like uh there are a lot momocon's super fucking popular guys like it for some people it sounds like a what the fuck is this thing it is the east coast for the uh, southeast coast version or the south's version of anime expo yeah it's huge opinion. it's fucking huge even whenever they expanded it the other year like the after the pandemic it was packed wall to wall so like I, I never got calculus. Trust me, I never did either. Um, I have a disability. I, uh, I, I took remedial math in high school. Um, and people wonder why I was so bored. Uh, I also took remedial math, but it was because I was stupid. It just takes me a longer time to get things, get get equations done, but even then I still figure it out. Uh, I also just got bored easily with some of this shit. But like, I remember like you were like, you came to me and you're like, yeah, I, I like I got a text on my phone. It's like, hey, uh, can you take me back to the uh, Airbnb? It was our first MomoCon as our group. And um, 
and we all like several of us shared the same Airbnb and I was like yeah sure fine and you were so like, like I, I was like you were so apologetic the entire ride when we both we all agreed that it, it's fine because it, I was like back. well yeah again because I was so used to like getting yelled at oh. for like because my parents did it all the time. They'd get mad at me and be like, oh, you're... So I was so I was so used to getting yelled at that I was waiting for you to get mad at me. And then, I, it's like I said before, I remember so distinctly uh, when you... when you first saw me and I, I was fucking shake. I must have looked like a fucking sad chihuahua because you, like, you immediately looked at me and went, are you okay? <laughs> Yeah, that was just. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm fine. Why do you think? Why do you think I'm not okay? And you're like, you look like you're gonna collapse. Are you all right? And I'm like, I'm fine. I'm oh, so sorry. I remember. I remember. It was also, uh, again, not used to the South. Yeah, it was so hot. You were, you were dressed up. You were dressed up as Caleb. Uh, I was uh, uh, for the first little bit of the con, and I was like, "Oh, this is a mistake. I'm gonna die." The, yeah. uh, the moment I saw you wear that, it's like, "Oh, honey, sweetheart." You know. <laughs> In fairness, I think I would have been fine if I hadn't, if we hadn't have had to make the walk. Uh, uh, but the because there was from where we had breakfast that morning to the to the con floor was was a little bit of a walk. And so I was out in the sun for a little too long, wearing a wool-lined coat that was made out of faux leather. I oh, wanted, no. I wanted to kill myself. I was dressed as yeah. Mark One Caleb. That will do it. It's hey, why do you think that I when I was like I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do another punk character cosplay? I was like I'll do Kirby, and the first thing I said was I'm gonna do a skirt and shorts so I don't have to die. <laughs> well it's weird because um being with me in ontario Ku being from canada you would think that we wouldn't be able to survive in like the worst the typical form of humidity that you guys have to deal with I fucking but the so here but here's the but the weird thing is um there was a time where like one of my first I think it was my first time, well, actually my second time, the first time I've ever been in the States was uh, when I went to New York as a toddler because my parents brought me there and I, I, I wouldn't be able to remember unless that they had like a photograph. But um, so apparently the second time, I, oh, sorry, not, not being first time in the States, but first time outside of Canada, the second time was when I had a vacation in Mexico. And so far that's been the only time, but it's like, you go over there because that's like way down south mm -hmm. yeah. and the the humidity there is so much different it's so it's so much more different than it is to the heat that we have because we have like damp humidity oh yeah we get the worst kind up in yeah. the north you get wet yeah yeah we have we have the worst kind of humidity in terms of like damp ones like the type that you just that the, the type that definitely feels like the the kind of like, oh, I can't even breathe in this type of heat. It's the... Yeah, uh, um, my dad used to say that, like, one of the benefits of having that, like, horrible humidity here specifically, um, in, like, because I'm from Minnesota, but he was like, one of the best things about having it is that it means that you can just go jump in the fucking lake. Yeah. The, the, well, that's the, the, that's the benefit. That, yeah, that's our benefit, too, because... Um, we're able to do that. Yeah, just go jump but, in the lake. And it's like, and, oh, and, God, I will... In comparison, though, when we went to Mexico, I was like, "How hot is it here?" And it's like, "Oh, it's forty, like forty degrees. It would be, it would be our equivalent of forty degrees." I'm like, "You're kidding! You can't be serious. That does not, this does not feel like forty degrees." But then I would find out, "Oh, wait, it's dry heat." Mm -hmm. like, I would oh. rather the dry heat a hundred, a hundred times out of a hundred. Yeah. I no, no, the, no, no. I agree because that that was the difference. I'm like, it doesn't feel that hot down here, but that's because the form of heat is different. It isn't damp heat, it's dry heat, what Mexico has. So we're like, this actually feels nice. I remember- This uh, actually makes me, in this actually makes me enjoy- Being here. <laughs> Fucking- Being I, here, yeah, in summer. Uh, 
I remember the move was... I moved in July! Yeah... Why did I do that? Why the fuck did I do that? But I moved, I moved in July, and I'll never forget... Uh... Coming... I came out of that fucking truck. Out of that fucking moving truck. I was... You would have thought they pushed me in the Mississippi. Like, my I, my clothes were wet. They were stuck to me. They were damp from all the sweat. And I I laid on the... I remember this so distinctly. I laid on the fucking kitchen floor. And I was like, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna fucking die. And they're like, we have to unpack, like, half of the truck. And I'm like, can we... Can it wait, like, 20 minutes? I'm gonna die. I'll curl up and I will be dust. Ugh, I'm so glad. Listen, also, it fucking snowed here in the winter time, and there were like a couple inches of snow, and I was I was bitching about it because I had to go outside and do all of the stuff for the chicken every morning. And I was like, I I moved to get away from this shit. I hate this. This sucks. <laughs> and then I got and in call. It wasn't as bad as in... what you would expect up north, but still. I fucking got in call with Crafty, and he's like, "Does it remind you of home? Does it make Does it make you nostalgic for home?" And I got quiet, and I went, "Yeah." <laughs> like in I did. I did. I was like, "Damn it! I did miss it a little bit. This sucks." Yeah. I fucking hate it here. I'll say this. Uh, I love I love whenever it snows down here uh, because it tells us how inequipped our state is for the minor minorest of inconvenience. Oh my god! North. As a as somebody from the fucking cold white north, it was so fucking funny. It was so fucking mm. funny. I was laughing my ass off. You guys, you motherfuckers, got like two inches of snow and. Everything shut down. Your whole the ex, the whole fucking <laughs> state turned off. It was pretty bad. And I was like, was pretty bad. I'm like, you guys are pussies. You couldn't imagine. Granted, uh, you you oh, oh your infrastructure is no. just not built for it because there's no reason oh, no, for yeah. it to be. But it's which is fair. But like, then we got like the real snow. We got like a foot. Yeah, and it was fucking, pretty solid. It was a pretty solid foot of snow. And like, it was so funny. It was so fucking was. funny. We, I was sitting outside, and every so often, when I'd go look outside, I'd see the roads weren't plowed. And, like, I think at one point, out loud, I said something like, um, like, man, the plows are off their game. And Justin looks at me and goes, there's, like, two plows for this whole city. And I'm like, that's right. I forgot. Oh, no. I rem okay, so uh, that brings me to an interesting story for uh, for uh, my area, right? Mm -hmm. The first ever big snow I ever experienced in this state. Now, mind you, I've lived in this state since '97. Was uh, how can I put this? It was about two feet, which was a which is a lot. It's about a foot, a foot and a half, two feet. I don't remember fully, so I may be fudging the numbers a bit. Uh, 2008, uh, April, which is still like a lot of people are like, wait, what? Whenever it comes to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Oh no, you, you, just, you know the state, yeah, but you don't know my address. Um, <laughs> and uh, I don't give a shit if somebody knows my state. Uh, my address is the, one, two, three. Fake Street. Fake Street. Uh, Internet Boulevard. <laughs> um, my name, my address is 123 Help. Um, help! My address is 123 Help! <laughs> help! Uh, and it, it's like, I went out to... It, it was like, school is closed. Dope. Awesome. So I went out to go to one of my favorite stores because I was a broke bitch. And they, uh, it, they had... Uh, you could play video games there... Uh, to test them out before you play them. And broke bitches like me use that as an excuse to just play video games. Fuck yeah. Uh, everything was closed. Everything was closed. Now, mind you, this year, nothing, not many things were closed. They, they closed early, but they weren't closed, closed. Community but in Texas sucks ass. You can stand outside in the shade for a minute and be fucking drenched in sweat. 
Uh, yep. Bun Bun, first of all, welcome to chat. It's uh, oh, wow. it's always lovely to see a new face. Uh, second, that sounds horrible. <laughs> yep. Uh, the but the, the the thing that that makes me laugh is, do you know what our plows were? Hmm. Uh, you you know the roadside uh, trash slash um, like basic uh, road repair trucks, right? Yeah. They just put re they. I don't remember what they specifically put, but they weren't plows. They weren't plow. Hooks. They just put the fucking. They just put the fucking shovels on them. Yeah, I I remember like there was footage of one city. They put road barriers in front of the trucks. Oh my god, that's so fucking funny. Oh no! <laughs> that's so fucking like, funny. Like, that's gonna work. That'll be fine. Need needless to say, they had to learn the next year, uh, and they got, like, the, the gravel trucks, right? And they that other states would use to, you know, plow and uh, put down salt, right? Yeah. And they were expecting to have the same amount of snow the next year. We haven't had the same amount of snow until this year. <laughs> so. Well, hey, I'd I'd rather your fucking I'd rather the fucking city government put money towards it than fucking declare martial law because nobody knows how to fucking drive. Uh, yeah, that's the thing though. Those trucks were not here. Yeah, I know. When, <laughs> I think it's either they sold it or they gave them to they gave them to Nashville. Have I? Have I have I told you the tale of uh of the bandit in my hometown? The piss bandit? No, the uh the taco the the Taco Bell bandit. No. <laughs> okay, I fucking love this story. So, uh uh so I come from uh a podunk town in the middle of fucking nowhere. Or no, I'm sorry. I love the way my dad says it. It's not quite nowhere, but you can see it from there. <laughs> and How is that not a line from, like, Curse the Cowardly Dog? I don't know, but my dad says it all the time, so I've naturally stolen it. But, uh... So... There's no... So at, like... In a town of, like... Say, I'm... 10,000, maybe? Uh, there's, uh, there's, okay, hang on, let me, because I, I have to, I have to illustrate the scene for you. So there's the highway. So this is the highway. There's, uh, I'm orienting it in my head, hang on. I'm actually gonna do it like this because it's easier for me to orient it in my head. Uh, he did. Pre he did presents drawing maps. There's so. Uh, there's a. There's a fucking turnoff. And there's a Taco Bell. Right here, and there's another weird family. There's just another family restaurant next to it. That's only important so you know like the layout, right? So Taco Bell, there's a, some family restaurant. There's a fucking gas station right here. So here's the gas station. There's another turn off there. Now there's a lamppost right here. It's 1 a.m. Uh, some dude hits this lamp some guy is drunk driving and hits this lamppost with his car. So there's just... Car. Just slams into this lamppost with his car. He... There's no one on the streets. Because it's... Fucking 1am. Because obviously, it's like the bar's closed. So once he's hit this car... So once he's hit this lamppost... He drunkenly stumbles into the Taco Bell. So he cro <laughs> so he crosses the highway after hitting this lamppost and goes in the Taco Bell. And the uh and he says to the people who are closing up, he goes, "Somebody hit that light post." <laughs> <laughs> Now, 
here's the thing about that. The Taco Bell drive through so where the windows are, is right here. So the only windows are on this side of the building. So nobody saw him hit that light post. Common sense would dictate that the drunkard who just stumbled in here not 30 seconds after, not a minute after the sound of someone hitting a light post probably was the one driving the car that hit the light post. Jesus. They call the cops. The cops show up. They ask the guy what happened. And he tells them, well, I was, I was walking home from the bar and I just saw this guy hit a light post and then run off this direction. And I, I, I went in because I wanted to, I wanted to tell them what happened. And the cops are like, so it's not your car. And he goes, no. And they're like, all right. Well, sir, it was snowing this morning and it's 1 a.m. So nobody's on the roads. So there are footprints leading from that car to this Taco Bell. Did, were you the one who hit the light post? And he goes, no, I heard what happened and I went to see if anybody was okay. And I saw the guy running off. Well, here's the thing. He, the only people that could have seen it were the people in the gas station across the street. This gas station across the street did not have cameras. <laughs> so there were no cameras facing the street to see it. Nobody in the Taco Bell could have seen it. The family restaurant's at the wrong angle, so no- and no- and was closed, so there was nobody there to see it. There was nothing they could do. Oh my god. Re listen! Reasonable suggestion! Because I presume they ran his plates and saw it was his car. Either- okay. I don't remember if they ran- if they didn't run his plates. Or if they did and he was driving somebody else's car? Because the re- Because I remember the- I Because re I've told this story. And they said the thing was, because nobody saw it and they couldn't tie this car to him. Maybe it was his wife's car. Maybe it was a buddy's car. I don't know. But because nobody could tie the car back to him. There was nothing anyone could do. They had to let him go. So they didn't bother to- so did they even look in the car to- for any, like, insurance or but any, like, and identification in that sense? That's what I'm saying, is I think, if I'm remembering the story correctly, it wasn't his car. He was either borrowing oh, somebody was... else's car, or, like, I mean, circumstantial evidence, nobody knows, but I, re I remember the detail that it wasn't his car, because there was no way that they could link it back to him. Wow. Which is bananas! Which is insane! <laughs> so he got away with it! Okay, here's my question. Was this on the news? No. It might have made it into it might have made it into the papers, but I, I the reason why I say that is because uh have you ever heard of Onyx the Fortuitous? <laughs> no. <laughs> you would love Onyx the Fortuitous. It's it's a character created um by a guy on YouTube who goes by let me get my two results. Uh Bowser Vids, right? Mm -hmm. And the character is like I get everything that I own in the mall. I'm socially awkward and all that stuff. His the most popular video he made, well one of them was Weird Arby's guy. Where it's like he edited himself into a news report 
for like a, a like a guy riding into an Arby's, or or him editing himself into a like a news report of uh, the, the statue of of, of uh, Bahamut or Baphomet or whatever. Baphomet, yeah. Baphomet, and just him like just wearing like a really small like a fedora two sizes too small wearing, oh like, is he the i don't know yeah it's yeah it's that's onyx support too. okay then yes i know him yeah 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 he like like hearing that story all that goes in my mind is if there was a news report there uh, there better be an onyx support doing this there it was know. so fucking yeah it was so fucking funny it's that and uh oh here's another good one this should tell you where the fuck uh, how in the boonies I lived at the time. Uh, I remember I I was being picked up for lunch by my grandpa so that I could go to off-campus lunch. Uh, and we were hanging out. Uh, and I asked him what he was up to, and he goes, well, I got a weird call from the school today. And I was like, yeah? Because he used to work at the school. Uh, and he goes, yeah. So there was an incident this morning. And I'm like, oh, was it bad? And he goes, no, uh, just weird. And I was like, what do you mean weird? And he goes, there was a moose on the football field. <laughs> what? Moose. A moose. He was just there, moose. just hanging out on the fucking <laughs> on the fucking junior high football field. And they caught so th because my grandpa worked for the school, they called him and they were like, What do we do? And I said, What did you tell them? And he goes, I told them to let it mind its fucking business. I was like, What was I supposed to do? I wasn't gonna call the fucking dog catcher. And I'm like, Well, yeah, but like. So the middle school boys didn't, uh, football team didn't get to practice that morning because there was a fucking moose on the field. I'm just imagining just like the worst situation. Like, all right, boys, you're gonna be practicing your tackling. Your opponent, <gasps> this, this moose. moose. This moose. <laughs> why are why are moose like? What is the plural of a moose? Moose. Uh, it's moose. just moose. It's just, yeah, it's just moose. Because yeah, yeah. it's not. It can't be like meese or my or mice or anything like that. It's just. No, no, the, the, it could be like meese if you weren't a coward. Moose. Uh, the moose is the lumbering large version of the of the wasp or the hornet. If you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. But if you don't, they'll fuck your day and your life. You can't like you can't win. You you <laughs> cannot win any kind of confrontation with a fucking moose. You just can't. Yeah, You're just gonna die. Yeah, there's, a, yeah, there's just there there is a reason why whenever um like moose wander onto like a highway, they end up like wrecking a vehicle more so than they get wrecked themselves oh yeah my dad i was talking to my dad about this about like about moose in general and he said think about it like this if if you hit a deer if you're in a truck like a, a decent sized truck you hit a deer uh on the highway going like 60 70 right uh you need to take your car into the shop the deer is dead Everything's covered in blood. The airbag deploys. You're in pain, right? He's like, if you're in a G-Wagon going 70 on the highway and you hit a moose, your car is totaled. You're dead. The moose is fine. Yep. The moose yeah. lumbers back into the woods. They're fucking cement highway dividers, those fucking things. I love them. I think they're so cool. Also, okay. Who's ready for a weird screed? Are you ready for a weird screed? A, a, tra a trademark Heaton weird screed? Um, I think that there should be a third animal classification. Between, like, herbivore and carnivore? Not even herbivore or? and carnivore. I think that there should be a third uh, animal classification between prey and predator. I mean, isn't there basically just, like... I think there's a terminology for it just, like, for, like, certain herbivores that have reached the size that basically like nothing can eat them except for like they're, when they're baby the, yeah, the answer the, the name is guy there's the, just the name is guy there just there shouldn't be i i should not have to live in a world where we look at things like a like a moose or a fucking hippopotamus and we go that's a prey animal no the fuck it's not 
No, no, that is basically prey that have maxed their defense stat. Yeah, no, no, no. like, like no, the, like no, the fuck they aren't. <laughs> I mean, looks. technically it is a megafauna, but like it, it, it probably like I could say moose is probably like one of the smallest of the megafauna nowadays. I would call moose a megafauna, even if they're not but, scientifically considered that. I'd call them that. The the thing I would say is yeah, the third the it, I, I'm I'm telling you, guy. There are little guys, there are big guys. At the end of the day, nobody messes with Guy because Guy is just doing their own thing. Moose, hippos, capybaras. Uh, I keep uh, thinking every time you say Guy, whales. every time you say Guy, my brain immediately defaults. I can hear in Aether's voice six equally spaced men. <laughs> <laughs> but like. Like, I, I just, I think that there should be another class. I think we should have another word for it. I think, I think bonkers? that that's... Yeah, I'll go with bonkers. Like, I don't... No, I was, I was like, bonkers. Chonkers. chonkers also will work. Chonkers. I just, there should be some, like, I, I, again, I refuse to live in a world where, uh, scientifically moose are considered prey. Prey to what? Uh, like, uh, I think the only time you could have, like... I think the only time you really have moose as prey if it's like if it's an old moose and you have some really hungry sets of wool, or you reach that perfect, that perfect position where the moose is able to dive deep enough to become prey for orcas. Oh God, uh, we call moose prey animals for when we bring dinosaurs back. You're so right. No, no, the, they're prey to human. All animals are prey to human. Does it make me lucky if I've never seen a moose before? If you live in, if, if by your previous comment, Bun, saying that you live in Texas, no, it, I'd be, I would be more surprised if you had. Okay, uh, how, yeah, how do you describe a moose to someone who's never seen a moose? Basically, take, you know those big longhorn bulls? Basically, imagine if it was his, like, rugged country cousin that See? had, like, this very prominent nose and, like, nobody took him seriously. But you leave him alone and get him mad and he's going to break your limbs. See, I would disagree. I would describe yeah. Moose to someone who has never seen one as a cow but longer. I mean, that's a cow fair. But, cow a but cow but taller. Yeah. A cow but taller. And, Simply and, longer. And, and, and antler, and not horns, but antlers the size of friggin... Uh, satellite longer? antennas. Uh, uh, the, and they're not even like antlers, like in the traditional sense. Like, look at, like, look at Heaton's antlers. These are not antlers in the traditional sense. These are ha these are like horns that look like hands that are going to grab you. Oh, the way Wait, I yes, love the way my a, yeah. mom. I love the way my mom describes it is that they have rocking chairs on their heads. Because <laughs> they do. They're like the size and shape of a rocking chair. If you looked at them from a distance, you'd be like, that fucking. That's a fucking big deer. How do you get that fucking chair on his head? Oh God! Have I told you? Have I told you about the bear? About the cool bear? I don't think you've ever talked about the cool bear. I should tell you about the cool bear. So, uh, this was not where I lived, but it was in my like, my like tri-state area, I guess. My my regular like little area. Uh, so there was a guy who sent. Uh, he sent a message from uh, to the, like the local paper to the local DNR to the fucking to the fish cops, and told them, "Hey, uh, there's a bear." And they were like, "Oh, okay, where?" And he goes like, "On the outside of town." He's like, "Okay, we'll go deal with it." And he was like, "Um, that's the thing." And they're like, "What do you mean?" And he goes, "It's weird. Something's wrong with it." Okay. So they go look. This fucking bear didn't have arms. Oh. Wait, wait, but he's the one that has the most right to bear arms. I know! <laughs> but they have he, taken away his second amendment and this will not stand. But he <laughs> he didn't have forearms. And so he when the bear. when the DNR went to check him out, they were like, what the fuck? And so they I think they, I don't remember if they tranked him, because he was near the, the, there is a bear center nearby. But I, no, I think they left him be. I think they tagged him, but I don't think they, um, like, took him in anywhere, now that I'm thinking about it. But he, there were a bunch of pictures of him. Uh, and yeah, he was just walking around in the woods without arms. And he was a grown adult, and he was fat! 
So was he like just like was he like walking along like his face dragging on the ground, or was he just like just lumbering on his hind legs? On his hind legs. He was just he was just walking up. He was walking upright on his hind legs. And I just see a little like those videos where it's like a dog or a cat, and they don't have their front legs, and they're just like waddling along on their hind legs. Yeah, literally exactly that. And a ton of people were talking about it because they were like, "How the fuck?" Not only did he live so long, because he was an old man, that fucking bear, but also they were like, how did he, how did he live so long? How did he get so fucking fat? Like, what? he just, like, he was a chubsy boy. And they were like, now, he's, he's eating well, but how? Now, how is this bear supposed to hunt without front claws? I don't know, but he was doing it. Like sort of thing. Like, yeah. Like I don't know if it was like like he lost them in like a fight with another bear, or if some like hunter took them away. It's like a trophy. Or... From the from the looks of the photos, if I'm remembering correctly, he it was a birth defect. He just didn't have yeah. them. They were just gone. Oh, so adapted. Oh. The, yeah, it's most likely he just adapted since birth. So. And I think that's neat. I think that's fucking sick as hell. How did that bear not get a movie, but Cocaine Bear did? Man, I'm just, I'm just sitting over here. It's like, I can't believe we're looking at Bear Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> you ain't got no arms, Bear Lieutenant Dan. He was such a, and apparently he was really friendly. So they surmised that probably he was, uh, he was being fed by somebody. Yeah, I want to be surprised. Hey, did I you, know, hey, fun fact, did I, you know that you're not allowed to, bait deer for deer hunting anyway he was probably eating all the apples left from when they were baiting for deer hunting <laughs> yeah well, i ah. gotta get going i'll talk to y'all later it's nice talking to everybody goodbye, goodbye. Okay. bye you're not who was to... that nice man who was that nice imp <laughs> <laughs> oh god uh another good one uh so this was so i, I want to tell this story because i like it because i think it's very funny uh, people are very stupid. So, uh, heard this one at a gun show. Uh, the DNR were talking about, um, they had a, they had a really cool display about that was anti-poaching. And they told stories about poachers that they'd caught. And quite a few of them were truly just very sad. This one was so fucking funny. I still think about this. These dudes are fucking morons. <laughs> so, okay. You can't... So there's... You can't hunt an animal that doesn't have a season. Right? Um... Unless, obviously, they're like... Invasive or well, dangerous? Not even inv... Well, if they're invasive, then they're... Then there's always a season on. But, like, uh... No, it's if they're... Uh... If they're, like harassing your, um, your, like, your property or your livestock. Uh, so, like, for example, if you see a raccoon in your backyard, you can't shoot it, but if you see it trying to chase down your cat, you can. You just have to call the DNR. So, you can't hunt trumpeter swans. Uh, annoying as those fuckers are, you can't, you can't shoot them. Uh, so it's winter time, uh, and a, a guy calls the DNR, uh, because he heard a gunshot. And then another one. So he's like, somebody's hunting out here. And there was no season on for anything. And he's like, I saw two guys dragging something out in the snow. Uh... So somebody's doing some illegal shooting. And they're like, all right, we'll go look. So they go out and they go look. And this, it's two, it's two dudes. And the, and the fish cops approach them and are like, hey, uh, we got reports of gunfire. Are you guys hunting out here? No. Hmm. Okay. Why are there rifles in your trucks? Fuck. Okay, so we were hunting. Okay, what are you hunting? We were hunting geese. Alright, sure. Okay. 
just in that transitional period. All right, fine. So you were hunting geese. Cool. Where are they? We missed. Okay. You mind if we take a look around? Uh, yeah, sure. So they're looking around where they'd been hunting, and these fucking morons, these dipshit dickheads, were like, "Oh, the cops are coming." They buried the swans in the snow. My they're white. They won't notice them. Oh. My brother in Christ, they're bleeding. Oh. You boy. shot them. <laughs> so there's just this horrible mess of fucking blood and feathers. They undig the mound. Why are there why are there two swans with bullet holes in them? Were you hunting swans? No. Well, they have bullet holes in them, and they're right next to where your trucks parked. Did you shoot them? Well, okay, yeah, we we did we did shoot them, but it was an accident. We hit them because we didn't. <laughs> We hit them because we didn't want to get They fell on my bullets. They fell on my bullets five times. Oh, no, no. The the actual excuse is dumber. Well, we, why were you hiding them? Oh, we didn't want to get in trouble. Okay, fair. So what kind of accident made you shoot two trumpeter swans dead in the chest? And they look at each other, and they look at the fish cop, and they go... Well, we thought they were geese. Now, some of you, some of you in chat may be thinking, maybe, maybe, maybe you're squinting your eyes and you're trying to conjure a memory, and that's cool. So, let me, like, let me like, show you something. Like young Did they, like, still have down on them, or? Let me, oh, let me, let me show you. While you're pulling that up, I have some hilarious news for you in particular. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I'm not gonna dox where you, uh, used to be from, because mm -hmm. I'm not a dick, uh, but, uh, the person, uh, that is, uh, where is famous, that is where you're from, is going to be here this weekend, which I think is very funny. Really? Apparently. Rad. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I should go see him on principle. <laughs> Abe Lincoln. That's right, Chad. Yeah, Abe Lincoln. You're so right. It's from uh Kansas City. No fuck. It's from Fuck. I thought I knew my history. Nebraska. No. So no. so for so for your benefits, Chad. This is a goose. There's a geese. This is a and as a Canadian, we, we will not apologize for geese. Every time people say, oh, Canadians are nice, Canadians are friendly, geese. Also, we will airdrop wolves on you. So, yeah. goose. <laughs> what they had shot was that. Fellas. There's a difference. Now, the thing that you don't... Here's the funnier part about this, right? Is like, okay, we thought it was a goose. Not only do swans, especially trumpeter swans, look nothing like Canadian geese. Uh, I don't know if... If you're not super familiar, you probably won't know this. They're also twice as big! Yeah, they're huge. They're look, huge! Look. Trumpeter... Trumpeter swans are, like, the size of a small dog. Like... Well, swan swans in general are just bigger than geese. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. It's, like, swans in general, bigger than geese. A trumpeter swan... And we have... It's, like, it's like the, small, the size of, like, a, a small dog. Like, that's... No, you fucking didn't. Yeah, like, we, we have our fair share of swans as well, apparently. That and we we can tell you right now we leave them alone. The swans are fucking water birds, aquatic birds of any variety, dicks. I, I still just love finding videos where like 
you'll see like a swan flying into a ti into like a tiger enclosure just to drink some water, and it'll scare it away. Like full grown tigers getting scared away by swans. They're dicks. They're fucking fucking seabirds. Any kind of water faring birds are fucking rats, dog. I've been I have been hunted by seagulls in like public parks before back home. <laughs> I've been fucking. Hank Green would like a word. Pelicans are the best. No, my dad so was nearly attacked by pelicans. Listen, are pelicans <laughs> are pelicans cool? Yes, they are. They're very cool. Are they dicks? Yes, I've watched I... them try and eat capybaras. I, I've seen them just on the occasion. You just be like, oh, by the park, what a lovely day, and that one just ate a pigeon. On fire for rent. Also. Uh, first Although of all, yes, I love Gustarian. Second of all, uh, why are they so big? I don't know. Fucking, I don't know, man. What if, fucking, I've been- They that a lot. They're just born this way. I don't, I don't know, dog. They're simply so large. Also, one of my favorite things about trumpeter swans in particular is that, like, they're usually the ones that you go to. When you say swan, you think of a trumpeter swan. And they're really pretty, and they're graceful and elegant. They make the worst sound. <laughs> they make the worst fucking sound I've ever heard in my life. They- I love the way my dad described it. My father described it as, they make a sound, uh... Or no, I was the one who did this, and my dad thought it was funny. They sound- I want you to picture- Picture in your mind's eye, in your mind's ear, the sound that a regular Canadian goose makes. The honk, the distinct honk of a Canadian goose. Now I want you to picture that bass boosted as just loud as fuck. Uh, and then in your mind, it's that sound loud as shit but it also sounds like you have wrapped both of your hands around its neck and you are shaking it violently. Well, the only way we can describe it is, ah yes, swans, the Fran Drescher of the bird kingdom. You're so right, actually. Hang on a minute. Fran Drescher? Let him cook. They are the Fran Drescher of the fucking bird kingdom. They're pretty, but they make the worst noise. Fucking, they, ah, oh, they yonk. So basically, Stop. you're 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 basically choking on an ogre horn. Yeah. <laughs> like your deep throating of a vuzela. Yeah, yeah. yeah! Your deep throating of a vuzela. You're so right. It's the worst. I hate it. They make an awful noise, which sucks because they're so pretty. So this actually makes me wonder then, because uh, with the, all these different water birds. Ontario, back me up on this. How dangerous would you say our loons are? Uh, a loon, I mean, are graceful, loon. beautiful, not being able to walk on land loons? Our beautiful, well, thing, our like, state bird. Well, I think loons, like, they usually keep to themselves. They're not really as, like, active as, like, most of the time, like, it's very rare to see them uh, show up on land, uh, show up near people. And, like, it's actually kind of funny. My nephew is actually afraid of loons because of their scary. Oh, I'm very well a kill deer. We know of those. But, like, loons, they keep to themselves mostly. Like, they make their haunting calls and they keep to themselves. I love loons. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, by comparison, they are pretty much, they, <laughs> they're pretty much like the polar opposite of swans. They're not very big, although they can be as big as geese, I think. Uh, not as tall, but they could be elongated. Like, they're, like, like they're very, like, the slender. They're basically, like, if to anyone who's never seen a, a, a loon before, okay, like, imagine, sure. like, imagine, like, like a cormorant. Like, it's very, like, sleek, very, like, slender, darkish color with, like, a sharp beak and, like, this little, like, speckling pattern. For your, uh, yeah. for your reference, chat. And they can swim underwater on, like, in a similar vein to penguins. They're so oh, pretty! Big eye. Oh, they're so like that, that. Remind me if I ever do, I need to send you a loony because they're the, our coin that have a, a loon on them. They're so pretty. I love them. They're okay. Loons are funny. I love them. They make the prettiest noise in the whole world. Hang on. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I was about to say. They're like the polar opposite of swans in that they're very skittish. They probably don't confront like 
Let me pull uh, others very well, but they make such an iconic call, I'll like main call. I'll play a here. I'll play a loon call for chat. Yeah, this is what they. Uh, this is what they sound like. This one has babies. Like, if you're watching a program where, like, someone's out in the middle of nature or, like, they're camping or out in the woods, usually you'll hear, like, a loon call with some background noise. Yeah, that's the, that's the noise they make. They're so pretty. Wolf oh, yeah. duck. Wolf yeah. duck. <laughs> Wolf duck. <laughs> so I mean, kind of. Yeah, it, so it's it's actually it's like a very iconic. By this point, it's these days it's like a very iconic sound effect for whenever, um, in media they play like yeah, like outdoor if you're ever, type of thing yeah, at night. Yeah, for like outdoor nature camping that kind of thing. The funny okay, the funny thing about loons though is that so they're built wrong. Built wrong. Uh, so they are creatures that are meant. There should be no avocado on this. No avocado? Because yeah. I get avocado. You get avocado. I don't like avocado on my sandwich. Yeah, this is mustard. Thank you. You're welcome. Sandwich. Um, so, uh, before I take a bite of this fucking sandwich, um, the funny thing, so the funny thing about them, they're built wrong. Uh. Yeah, so I unfortunately. Want you to, so these are creatures that were meant to live in the water, uh, full time, but they can't. They have to lay their legs, eggs on land. The thing is, <laughs> they, their feet are, okay, so again, we'll, we'll draw, uh, we'll they're draw like it. Very, they're very far back, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll draw a little diagram again. So first of all, their legs <laughs> are right here, like on their body. Like this is, this is where their legs are right here. And then normally, whoops. So normally, right, when you have, like, uh, when you have, like, a duck foot, you would think that, like, their feet are kind of like this in the water. So, no. Their feet are like this. Their feet are sideways. So, like, instead of, instead of thinking of a duck's feet, like, standing like this, their feet are like that. Which is great for them because it means that they're better at swimming. They work as rudders, they it helps them go faster in the water, it helps them swim better. Uh, unfortunately, because they are birds, they cannot lay their eggs on the water or in the water. Uh, they, they basically, they, yeah, they, essentially they swim as if they were seals. Yeah, they swim like seals. But th because they have to lay their eggs on land, watching them drag their bodies up on land is so sad. Yeah. They look so... They're just... They're built so wrong. They're built solely for, for sea travel. For sea and air travel. Not built for land. Not built for walk. So they typically drag their bodies on land really close to the water. Lay their eggs and then drag themselves back into the water. And they also have... They always have... Good. Oh, I was about to say it's always, and that's always the reason why they have such like, um, not not in the sense of prey, but they always have situations where they have to go against snapping turtles. That's where they get fucked up by snapping like turtles. To, is the transitional species, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to prevent them their eggs from being like eaten. Mm. Especially because. Like, Good. Boone's got taste. What's up with Boone? I like eyes, too. Tara says, Last night I was hanging out with my friends in Boone Slayer. First of all, I love the idea that Boone is not your friend. And I thought, okay, I want to see their reaction to some of the characters in Touchstar, because I was pretty depressed and wanted to chill. Kitty and Boone got hella thirsty over eyes. I love eyes. He's my favorite, too. Yeah, you like you like your demon boy. You, you, I do. Demon. Um, hang on. 
I need... This is gonna be so fucking funny. So now... I just have to... So fucking good, such a good fucking turkey sandwich. <laughs> it's one of the things I love about my model is that it, it tracks so well you can see me fucking chewing. Yeah, that's amazing. My model father did a very good job. So now... We paste this. Oh, Very. Remember when I did the voice for Very in your stream? Now I don't have to draw a camouflage. Although it does make me think, speaking of models, like how difficult would it be to do for 2D models um, for characters that wear hats, like caps with visors? Historically, as somebody who wears a hat, uh, I was told that it's not super difficult. Um, I know Nezzy struggled with mine because uh, as you do, I'm in the Paperboy Cap Club. Um, I do like those types of hats. That's, me too. It's almost slightly what my hat is based off of. Mine's a Tiger and Bunny reference. Um, but like, it should be pretty easy. As long as you do the, uh... As long as you cut everything correctly, it shouldn't be a problem. Tried to visualize it when I was first drawing my avatar and I'm like, Oh shoot, how's this gonna work in in Vitaper Studio with the way it has to be in pizzas? Ugh. I cannot work in 3D space. I've tried. My brain is not I'm a 2D I'm a 2D illustrator. I can't do this. Yeah. I'd have an easier time carving things by hand than modeling them in Blender, I swear to god. Oh yeah. There has, there has been, like, uh, a moment in time where I did try out Blender. Um, far as I was able to get was, like, the basic structurings of, of a head. And, like, a poly <laughs> and like a polygonal um, beta version of what I thought Fiona Frightening would look like in 3D. Back when that was a thing. All right, now we do the text elements. Need a good, need a good font. So fucking stupid. <laughs> women me fish. Women me fear me fish fish. He wanted specifically the emojis, so I have to grab the emojis. I'll just put something in the side chat, hang on. I'm just putting an image in the open chat.
Huh. Not horrible. Can we talk about more weird animals? We absolutely can. Definitely. Did you know that binturongs smell like buttered popcorn? I think I remember hearing about that. They're also just- What smells like popcorn? It's an animal called a binturong. Binturong. Mm -hmm. They look like, um... I think they, they look like what would happen if you mixed a lemur and a raccoon. I'd, I'd say it's almost more like an eye eye and a red panda. You're so right. I'll put one in the open chat. Yeah. I, I always remember, because I remember, did you ever watch, like, Zaboomafu as a kid? You bet your ass I did! Yeah, because I remember they I used to have one on the show a lot. I remember seeing bits of Zaboomafu, but not not fully, unfortunately. I love did you hear? Zabu passed away! Yeah, like, uh, did you watch the defunct land on it? No, I couldn't. I would. I got too sad. Yeah, like, they were quite sad about it, because apparently it was, like, some kind of condition, but they are still working for, you know, at least, like, the crafts are still working today for, like, the efforts of conservation and such. They are as well. I guess the, uh, the, the one who does the outreach now is Zabu's son! Aw, that's nice. That makes me so happy. I fucking love Zabu. I mean, I'm so glad they're, like, doing stuff. Like, Jim, did you, I, they did one show that was, like, Wild Craft, which was, like, basically them with, like, superpowers, full-on Animal Man style. I wish I... Uh, God, I wish I could fucking adjust to curve. Give me text tools, you shitter. Yeah, I heard that that's like the one thing that uh, CSP doesn't have over Photoshop is the, the text. The one thing is that there's not enough text tools. If they have, if they add like text wrapping in the next fucking update, then it's over. Yeah. I love Ocelot. I also like the cats. It's weird to see, like, oh, I grew up with Wild Cratch as a kid, with, like. Damn, I grew up with Kratz creatures. I feel old. Fucking, I grew up with Zabumafu. <laughs> it's the generational thing. I like Jackie. She was designed... So all of TP's D&D characters are based off of Pokemon. So Jackie's a Pumpkaboo. Or no, she's a Gorgeist. That's right. Yeah, because like with the long hair and the little Ahoge. Mm-hmm. export that's jpegs we don't save we don't export to jpegs in this house i guess speaking of dnd peyton i've ever shown you my like very basic um uh, barbarian concept no let me see yeah so you're uh, sharing the um sidebar here because I actually got to, I did get to use this character briefly as like a guest uh, in one game. Was this on uh, Doji Mies or? Yeah, it was. It was his uh, Mario D and D campaign. Yeah, Ontario will know which one I'm talking about because he's, he's seen her plenty of times by now. Yeah, because you, you've used her for like your icon in Roll Twenty. Because like I thought she was a paladin. Well. There was well, she's dressed something like a paladin because that's where like the misconception would come in because she's supposed to be like a medieval warrior but has but utilizes traits similar that's more reminiscent of barbarians because she also uses the whole axe thing God, this scratches the fucking itch like you wouldn't believe god i was craving a sandwich <laughs> sandwich. Ooh! Fucking yeah, if there was ever a character, yeah, if there was ever a character that I would want to use in in an actual game, because see, Lavender is pretty much like the most straight to the books uh, D and D character I have made thus far. 
um, because uh, back then um, uh, the DM for Dojin Mi's campaign was going very much by the books. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll just go with Barbarian and see what exactly they have for their classifications and abilities and whatnot. The world always feels like you for a good sandwich or any good food, really. You're so right. There's always the importance of comfort food. Oh, well, yeah. Fun fact. Um, listen, Maslow and his hierarchy are fuckers, and I hate it, but... The thing is, if you're sad, like really, truly bone deep sad, I hate with my whole ass that I can tell you from genuine experience, you should stop, reassess, and the three questions you should ask yourself are, do I need a shower, do I need food, or do I need to drink something before you go from there? Because god damn it, I've had days where I've been like, I wanna die, I wanna fucking kill myself, I can't do this, I'm gonna throw myself into the sea. And then I've been like, I'm gonna go have a snack, and then I'll eat, and I'll be like, damn it! I feel better, life's worth living again. <laughs> it's just because you're hungry. Your mood dips when you're, when you're underfed, underwatered, and dirty. Undernourished in general. Mm -hmm. When you're undernourished and dirty, you don't feel good. And yeah. then I'll, sometimes I'll eat, I'll feel just absolutely fucking miserable. I'll be in a terrible, like, fucking death spiral. I'll have a, I'll have a sandwich and take a shower and I'm like, damn it, I feel better. Sometimes that's not it. Sometimes there's more to it than that. And you gotta do the rest, but sometimes, but it always pays. They're just quick things you can do to, to try and help. You need to always make sure that you take the proper time for self-care. Mm. And that includes having a sandwich. Foiled again works every time. <laughs> Sometimes the potty needs to be wet. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you need to be covered in soap. What was that old uh, convention rule where it's like, it's like you need to have like two, one shower, Two meals and eight hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. At the very least. I always, feel I always feel guilty having eight hours in terms of sleep because it's like, really? It always seems too long. That, that, that's the it minimum. Yeah, but I could that be working. The... But I could be. I mean, maybe. Well, I mean, mind you, that's probably me having so many night, having plenty of nights in uh, the past year or two of having to be up for work and only having like four to five hours. <laughs> mind you, that's my own dang fault, but nevertheless. I have seen a blobfish both uh, when they are sad and dead and also when they are happy and alive. What about an ocean or fish? I think I know what you're talking about. The big long one. Yeah, with the, or with the mohawk. Did you know that anglerfish are bigger than you think they are? Oh yeah. Yeah. Did you know that they can grow to be like six feet long? I didn't know that. I don't like that. I mean, I mean that's the females, and like the males are like tiny, and then they vestigially attach themselves to the females. <laughs> like that. I don't feel like they should be that big. I feel like I would like to take that up with God. I don't think you can do that. I don't think there's a complaint department for animals. I'm gonna have a list. When I die, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a list. Number one on the top of that list is uh, why can I not, why was I not allowed to pet the following? <laughs> why was I not allowed to eat the batteries? Not even First of all, shut up. Second of all, <laughs> uh, fucking, you know what? I wanna, we're, we're talking about animals now, so we're gonna, you know what? Here's another weird heat and screed. Of all the fucking animals on the face of this earth that we domesticated and made into pets, why the fuck didn't we domesticate red pandas? I don't know, they're just too far out there, I guess? 
They're so cute. I want to be able to pet one. And the fact that I can't because all of them are wild and they're not meant to be domestic pets is cringe. And I, I think that that's a slight against me in particular. I think that's homophobic. <laughs> I think not letting me pet... Also, listen... I know that on Twitch you're not supposed to talk about like willfully committing illegal activities, but I'm gonna tell you something right now. If I if I ever if a time ever comes where I go and visit uh, the craft man and we're doing something and I bump into a manatee, uh, I don't fucking care what the government says. Uh, I'll I'll pay the fine. That fucking manatee's not getting unpet. Well, as long as you're not carving your name into it, I think you're fine. I would- No, it's illegal! You can't! I know, I just- I just remember that news story that went around that someone carved the- The name of one- how, 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 Anton York into the back of the name of that thing. That's fucked up, first of all. Uh, really? If you did that, die. But, like, fucking- Uh, carving your name into a living thing is fucked up deeply, and you should, uh- I sentence you to having the same thing done. I'm going to write uh, your mother's name in your back fat with the switchblade. I hate you. No, you don't, no, but, no, 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 I just have this thing. For that rule, we will now write the name of this manatee upon your back. What is your name, manatee? By that name, we shall now carve supercalifragilisticexpialidocious in your back this moment. Exactly. That's how you know. Fuck you. Uh, die, actually. But also, uh, I repeat. That fucking manatee's not getting unpet. Look at the- They literally- Literally, they have not evolved to be mean. They have I mean, no- like They have no natural predators, and therefore they are not- uh, They are not genetically predisposed to hostility. And like, aren't they like only like one of two animal- Aquatic animals that is designed to eat plants in water? Yes, they eat grass. They're- They're the perfect friend. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm petting that fucking thing. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> also, Daedalus in the chat, uh, no, we do not need to make hyenas pets because they are very difficult. It's like on the same level, it's like, you know, you hear all those people in certain like, like Instagram accounts who do take care of like wild foxes and have to tell you about how difficult it is. Take that and times that by a billion for taking care of hyenas. Oh yeah, no, like I don't, listen, I don't necessarily think that every animal should be able to be pets. Like, I don't think you should be able to, like, keep them, is what I mean. I want to pet them. I want to be able to- I want to be able to walk up to be vacationing in Australia and walk up to a dingo and give him little ear scratches. That's what I want. You want you want to have some sort of interaction with them, not unnecessarily, like, yeah. take them home. And you you want to interact- them. You want to interact with them, but you don't want them scratching your eyes out or to be arrested for touching them. Exactly! Exactly! That's what I'm saying! You like don't need, it's you don't, I, need to, you don't need to take them home and hug them and pet them and squeeze them and cuddle them and call them George. You just need to just show them affection. I just desire to let them know how cute I think they are by giving them little ear scratches, especially because spoilers, everything likes to be pet. Like I don't know what to tell you. I I think that like certain animals should be left to their own devices and like be allowed to live in their natural habitats and should not be mess messed with by man to the extent that they cannot live. However, I think that giving them one little ear screechy would be fine. And I think as long that we as live they... and I think we live in a cold, uncaring world in which God is dead that I'm not allowed. As long as they are not the the kind that are hostile or territorial or not. And that's what I'm saying! I think that everything should yeah. let me give them little pets, little scritchies even. I think I should simply I, be allowed. But that's the thing, like you say, everything can give you scritchies. Like, what? What's the limit of? Do you want to give scritchies to anthrax? Every living thing, Ontario. Is <coughs> isn't anthrax technically a living thing? Isn't no? Is it yeast technically a living thing? Can you give scritchies to yeast? I'll give yeast if if this is listen. If this is the barometer we're going down, I will give a scritch to every oak tree and fu and fucking uh, jar of yeast. I'll do it. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just tell the officer the manatee booped you first? Exactly! I, officer, he bumped into me, and I- he bumped into my hand and started rubbing against it, and I'm not allowed to- I, I'm not allowed to I say mean, no. 
I mean, I'm just about to the situation where you and Gravity are doing this, and the cop comes in, just like, you know what? This is not even the fifth weird thing I've seen done in this swamp today. You're fine. Yeah, it's why I have to go with Crafty, because Crafty won't rat me out to the cops. I'm petting that oh, fucking manatee. Man you can't stop me. If Danica that's in the chat I... is like, Anthrax, why would you pet the entire band? I... Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to... <sighs> fucking Jesus. I was talking to Brick and Justin the other day. Uh, and we were talking about giving apples to the chicken. Uh, and... Brooke said, uh, I looked up, you can give them apples, but you can't give them apple seeds. It's not good for them. And I turned and I looked at her and I go, yeah, I mean, I could have told you that. And she goes, what do you mean? And I'm like, because of the cyanide in them, Brooke. And she's like, oh, well, yeah, but there's not like that much. And I'm like, yeah, not for us. Not like, for I'm, I'm 180 pounds. Yeah, not for me, but she barely weighs two. That's why you can't feed animals. Oh, I got really excited for a second. I just got a fucking YouTube notification and I was like, oh, new video? And now they're just streaming. Mm -hmm. Listen, I really like Bizzabizzow. I like her videos about redesigning Five Nights at Freddy's plushies. All right, Sims Mage, what's the voice? What do you want? Australian? I can do that. Okay, Google. Oh, we good. Set a timer for two minutes. And we're gonna bring out the Randy Fell face. Well, I haven't had to. I haven't had to do this muggy, one in a muggy, minute. Muggy, muggy, muggy. Muggy. <laughs> it's it's not as hot as I thought it'd be originally. It's fucking. Somebody said it's. Oh. Somebody said once that it's. Irish but spicier and like um, I mean kind of that's more the main thing of it it's it's just kind of I think it's more like a gruff British mode thing than anything else I think well yeah it's because of all the fucking Irish prisoners that got fucking Central Australia isn't it I mean you're not wrong I mean you're right but you shouldn't say it but you're not wrong plus I'm pretty sure living with Brookie here all the Roger Roger take down them clankish <laughs> I, I, I know it's actually New Zealand but still I would not. I would not be able to do a an Australian accent without getting it so entirely mixed up with Cockney. Oh, uh, so fucking um. So uh, not next week. Week after, um, we're doing. So for those of you who don't know, we do uh we do Star Wars: The Force Resistance. We have a pods of cast and also on YouTube. Uh, and Silver wanted to do uh, a one shot, right? And he wanted us all to be droids. And I, I thought, and I was like, well, I've, I've got. And I, I, I took the longest because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to be, right? I decided I'm going to be the most optimized gonk droid you've ever fucking seen. Oh my god. <laughs> really? You, you're, not, you're not gonna go full mouse droid? Okay, Google. Stop. Uh, no, because Brooke's gonna be a mouse droid. <laughs> yes! So... Brooke's gonna be a mouse droid. Uh... Justin is going to be one of the, the little orb, the Jedi, like, saber training droid oh, no uh and then what is ben ben's gonna be like one of the like separatist like attack droids like like the big bulky ones or like the I thinner so, rack rack yeah. one i think the big bulky ones he's he's not gonna be a roger roger uh he was a he was a b1 in a different one shot we did um but I, I, I need a character. Well, yeah. So I have a, I have a droid character already. Her name's Greek. Um, she's, 
She was specially- she's for, she's for High Republic. Uh, she was modified by a Jedi zoologist. Uh, she's a protocol droid, uh, for a- she has a protocol droid for a head. Uh, and, like, that's where all her programming is. Uh, but her body's an HK unit. <laughs> um, so basically, her head is a secretary. Her body is, uh, a mercenary assassin. And it's so that she'd be sturdy, so she could manhandle any animal that needed help. Uh, I'm trying to remember, like, wasn't there, like, one of the comics where it was, like, they had, like, the, the CP unit, but they put that on, and it had, like, assassin equipment, and had, like, all the little, like, bullet arms on it or something? Yeah. Um, but I was thinking, I was like, well, I can't play Greek, so I need to make another droid. And I was, I was waffling for a little bit. And I was like, I guess I might make a pit droid, maybe? I think they're cool, little guys. And then I thought about it, and my brain kept returning over and over. Gonk. 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 And I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm gonna be a gonk. I mean, not gonna lie, I could just see just the whole party just being nothing but oops, all astromechs. God, that'd be fucking funny. So to pick me up to speed in terms of um, concepts like this, this is like futuristic D&D we're, we're talking, We're playing right? Star Wars. We're doing it. Well, Star... I am a dumb... Yeah, we're playing Star Wars. Smooth of brain. The, sm the smooth of brain continues. So for, for those of you who are unfamiliar... Oh, like, this is what the, the gonk droid is. It's basically, imagine, like, a mailbox with legs. Yeah, for... <laughs> <laughs> it's Wally with legs. I was about to say, for those of you who don't watch Star Wars, uh, this. This is the kind of character I'm making. Gonk. Gonk. Oh my god. That's They're... actually pretty... Yeah, I've never... Of the times that I've seen Star Wars, I've never come across this uh, character concept, so... And, and I already like it. Yeah, they're all, they're all like little like background characters. Like like the mouse droid is fun because like there's one scene in like you know a New Hope where they're in the Death Star and there's that one little like it looks like a shoebox just running around and Chewbacca sh roars and just like and just like squeezes away. That's a mouse droid. I fucking oh, man. I love so the specific bit. So fun fact: uh, Gonk droids are for two things. Uh, they are mobile batteries. And they're garbage cans. You can store stuff in them. You, you right. just know, if, like, donk droids existed in our world. They'd have, like, tons of, like, USB outlets for people to charge their cell phones. Yeah, they're walking portable chargers. Uh, basically. Uh, you use them for energy storage. So, like, there's a big battery, and then you can store stuff in them. So, the, the bit that we made was that, uh, I was modified by the Empire in order to contain <laughs> and mobilize sensitive data. Donk. Brilliant. I am... I was custom built to make life on the docks easier. Donk. Um... But... Uh... I love... That actually... <laughs> I love Greek. Because you'll get a kick out of Greek. So she, her whole thing, right? So she's a, a High Republic. Uh, so she's with, so like a long time ago, right? <laughs> so her, us, her, the Jedi she's assigned to, his name's Doran. He's Brooke's character. Uh, he's Pantoran, so he's blue. Uh, he's an ambassador. He like, he's a diplomat basically. So she, the bit is that she will run off into the woods, disappear, and then come back. Master Doran, I've made a friend. And he'll be terrified and be like, what? What is it? What did you make friends with? And she'll just be walking hand in hand with a fucking rancor. But it's shaped. They are quite friendly, sir. I found that they are willing to be domesticated by the local population, and they're also quite willing in to protect the villages in exchange for treats. 
Like the the recur the joke we made is that one of these days she's going to wander off into the into the desert, come back, master. I've made a friend, and she's going to come back with a fucking and be and lead him to a fucking Zillow beast. <laughs> I've made friends with Godzilla. Three armed <laughs> clone Godzilla. I fucking love the Zillow beast. Like, just like it's like Star Wars. Like, no, we we can't put the references that close to our sleep. No, 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 no. We just have like, we just have freaking three armed Godzilla munching up dugs, and I can't have even touched by lightsabers. The th the cool thing about a Zillow beast is that like I can tell that Godzilla is the inspo, but it doesn't look like Godzilla. Yeah, it's like Godzilla mixed with like a tapeworm. He's so fucking long wow. and spindly, and he's huge. And it's just like the weird spindliness of it. Like, it's just, it's like three little toes and this massive, lanky, almost snake like frame. Also, hi, while we're on Star Wars, I'm going to give you one of my uh, Star Wars hot takes uh, because you totally asked for it. Uh, you know what? I'm not saying that everything Anakin did was right. I am, however, saying that the one good thing. The Darth Vader and the Empire ever did was fucking glass Geonosis. <laughs> I fucking fuck that place. Fuck Geonosis. Are you kidding me? That place sucks. Fucking this miserable desert, these fucking shitty ant people, and then on top of that, their fucking zombie parasite? I think the fuck not. Glass that goddamn place. Should have fucking exterminatus reduced it to fucking ashes. I'm not bug racist. I don't care. Listen, I don't know how to stress to you, right? It's not the fact that they're bugs. It's the fact that they're fucking wild, creepy shit that they do where they have fucking zombie plagues. Note to self: If ever in Heaton's campaign, play a Geonosian. Play a fucking Thry- I want to play a Thrykeen so bad. I have one bug D&D character, and I want to make another- I want to make so many. I love D&D. <laughs> I mean, it's always good to have a backlog of characters. I have, like, I, li I, I literally have, like, a file on my phone, which is just, like, okay, D&D concepts and the character designs I get for them. I have so many- uh, I, like I have, like, over a hundred D&D characters at this point. Oh my god. So, okay, so crappy. here's a like, dull whip. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was about to say, like, it's honestly, he did it's because of you and Crafted that actually got me into DD in the first place. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I blame I you for like, wanting to be part of like. games now. I t and it's actually kind of the reason why I hope that at some point um, that I would be able to be part of games. Yeah. Um, that you that either you or crafty would host because it's like i'd ra so here so here's the thing when it comes to being participating in campaigns like this i'd rather be part of games with i don't want to say experts but people players who know the game who know what they're doing well enough so yeah that know what they're doing to the point where if more novice players like myself were to ever come across things, situations like, oh, what, what, what would be like, what do I, uh, uh well, I'd be able to like ask the DM, and they would Im almost, they would have the higher chance of immediately giving me a reasonable solution. Yeah. You know, like. More than reasonable. Yeah. And spe and so in terms of characters, like there's this other one that I have, um, that I'm still in the process of designing. See if this end, ends up being original enough for you, he said. Mm -hmm. A, oh, what was it now? A druid who has the abilities of a dryad. Ooh, tree. So basically, Whoa. yeah, basically a, a dryad druid. That instead of transforming into animals, they're able to transform into a tree. I'm a firm believer that there's not enough plant-based druid stuff. 
I am also one of those fir firm believers that there's not enough plant-based droids. I think you should be I, able I, to turn into cool plant things. I want to be able to turn listen, into a fucking... I, I almost said a gibbering mouth there. A listen, fucking shambling mount. Listen, I don't, like... Okay, I, I don't play World of Warcraft, but World of Warcraft has, like, tree things that you can turn into if you pick a druid. Like, you could become, like, a tree owl bear thing, and it's fucking sick. Oh, that's cool. But yeah, like I actually, I actually tried to do some amount of research in, in the ways like, oh, what, what other things can a druid do in terms of like transforming into stuff since they have the whole wild shape thing, and I'm like, well, what if I had a druid that can become a tree and literally act as like the the wall for the party? Yeah. Like use the, like like use the tree like use the tree ability as like a barricade, like make it like the. The best defensive player for the party. I so basically, oh, yeah. you have a group basically build. circle, the circle of the moon, but tanky rather than attacky. Circle of the root. Yeah. Circle, circle of the like root. That. I do. Circle of the root. Circle of the root. There we go. Circle of the Groot. The man who hates oh. magicians is back. Yeah, because this one, to the closest I can figure into how I wanted to, I'm into how to make this work because this is obviously going into homebrew territory. Yeah. Um, is that I was this would be like a version of the circle of the land yeah, uh, class because that. it's like the class because it's like the closest I can think of in terms of like oh what would what would a druid that can become a tree instead of other animals be classified as and like well the land one seems to be the most fitting so that's pretty much what I was going with yeah how it so how's that's your day one. I like it. how's your day going condiment king <laughs> uh the TikTok blew up last night, and now I'm getting a bunch of like, uh, now I'm getting a bunch of videos tagging me of people getting mad at me being the condiment king. <laughs> so, so now you have to catch up on all the info. Yes. Yep, here comes, uh, here comes some puns. So for those of you who don't uh, know, so far, uh, yeah, there's currently a trend going on on TikTok where people are making TikToks as if they were Gothamites. And our dear Ben uh, made a TikTok defending Condiment King. And you, he insists, he's like, I wasn't trying to insinuate that I was Condiment King. But like, I watched that video. You were definitely insinuating that you were Condiment King. <laughs> and so now everybody, and then like he said, it blew up last night. So now everybody's like, no, you're for sure Condiment King. Yeah. And they're getting mad at me about all these, like, little, these situations, like, God, I'm king, uh, fucking lathered mayonnaise all over my car. I was late for work. Uh, and it's always, it's always people in, like, really nice suits, which fits into the narrative that Condiment King only goes after people who look like they're, like, business savvy individuals, because that is his audience. <laughs> um. So, I I'm, I'm a, I'm enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, somebody called me out by saying, well, not called me out. It's like, uh, that's not Condiment King. Condiment King doesn't have that kind of accent. Joke's on you. Gotham's in Jersey. And I based his ax uh, based my accent off of my two uncles that are from Jersey. Yeah, fun fact. Gotham City is in New Jersey. Yeah, Gotham's in New Jersey. Metropolis is near Kansas. It's not freaking pre-crisis where they're just across the river from each other. Yeah. Of course Gotham's in Jersey. <laughs> exactly. Derogatory. No, it, it derogatory. Absolutely. Absolutely derogatory. Um, but yeah, I'm having fun, like, replying to comments. The one thing that I have to, like, fight against doing is, like, constantly defending myself. Like, I have to let people win. Yeah, you can't win. Which is a weird... Yeah, because I can't win. Because I'm the... Because I'm a, because I'm a super villain menace. I just want to see you villain. just have, I'm like, some kind of, villain. like... I want to see just ultimate TikTok collab where it's, like, you, Calendar Man, and Killer Moth. <laughs> oh, he was specifically talking a lot of shit about Killer Moth. You just know they're gonna get in some kind of like TikTok feud war. Get in beef we'll with see, get, like, get oh, in beef with Killer. Go ahead. Sorry. Do it. No, get in beef with Killer Moth. That'd be really fucking funny. I'm trying to get in beef with Kite Man. That's who I want to go up against. Because Killer Moth, Killer Moth is fine. 
but he has this really weird obsession with crypto. So it's like, I'm not gonna... Kite man. Uh, <laughs> Kite man with NFTs. The whole, the whole oh. joke about Mothman is that nobody takes him seriously. People take uh, Condiment King more seriously than they take Killer Moth more seriously. Despite Killer Moth having a background that's almost one-to-one with Bruce Wayne. so fucking funny. I want- I hope so bad that you get to get into beef with Kite Man. <laughs> well, I just need to find somebody who will be Kite Man. That's the thing. Who's going to be the one who's like, okay, now we're just talking a lot of shit about Kite Man. <laughs> but the thing Kite is, Man, is that, like, ever since, ever since that one TikTok came out about, like, saying, like, there's, like, all of these villains are the worst, but the number one worst villain in Gotham is Condiment King. And I jumped off of that fucking platform. Uh, and now everybody's like, it's him! Get him! <laughs> I love that so much. That's so fucking funny. I literally took the target, put it on my chest, and said, come get me! <laughs> come at me, bro. You mad? Fucking, uh... <laughs> yeah. I also, I like the, um, where, what was the, one of them I saw was like, worse than the Joker, worse than the Joker. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. The one they, the one that you sent me where he's like, they caused a, he caused a fucking uh, ketchup shortage, which meant I had to eat my hot dogs bone dry. Worse than the Joker, worse than the Joker. <laughs> Yeah, I've been, I've, yeah, fair. it's, it's been fun. It's been fun. I'm trying to figure out like what the next TikTok I need to make. Cause I have to do, I have to do this right now. I, now I have to, now I have to fucking plan it. Now I've done the denial. What do I do now? I can't constantly lean into the same joke over and over again. Especially at this point, nobody believes that he's not Condiment King now. You need what to like, did, like the you need to do like the, I'm not saying that I am Condiment King. Cause I'm not, I'm not Condiment King. <laughs> I'm not Condiment King. But, but like if I was. Somebody did make things like, do you have any other beef with villains? And I'm just, and I'm tempted to jump off of that one and just go on a tirade of the, of the various villains. Cause this is the fun, this is the fun part. I get to flex my Batman knowledge. <laughs> do I have any beef with the now, villains? Uh, not. Personally, no, but you know who sucks? This is my top 10 list of top 10 things worth with Ten-Eyed Man. <laughs> Ten-Eyed Man, that's a good one. Oh, also, people fucking keep mixing up Calendar Man and the Holiday Killer. They're not the same guy. Fun fact, not the same guy. Holiday Killer is an actual fucking murderer. Calendar King is just a guy that's obsessed with holidays and doing crime-based holiday stuff. <laughs> holiday just kills people on holidays. That's it. <laughs> and it's not even like little holidays. It's like the major holidays. Calendar King, on, on the other hand, or Calendar Man, on the other hand, he just does shit on every holiday. Including, like, the, the like National Donut, Free Donut Day, and uh, fucking uh, National... Uh, pet your dog day, and like that's how fucking methodical he is. It's wild. They're all themed. Wait, so he keeps a list. So he so knows everybody. So... Go ahead, sorry. I was about to say it's like so for for the for the very few people here that don't follow Batman, i.e. me. There's a villain that literally makes every holiday of the year miserable. Yep. Yeah, the um, calendar, cal calendar King, you call him. Uh, calendar Man, but yeah. Cal calendar Man. Yeah, that's not as weird Jeez. as a razor head. Not like the movie. Oh. Not like the movie. You're, I'll, not, I'll, like I'll, the, I'll put, not like the I'll movie. Put calendar Man in the chat. There's or no, it, it, sorry, not a razor head. <laughs> pencil. Uh, it, it pencil Man, where he defaces you by drawing on you his pencil head. Fucking god, I, love I hate the, I hate the fact that Calendar Man actually does look pretty legit. 
<laughs> no, yeah, Islander Man's costume is fucking. It is like it's fucking impressive. It's cool. It's a cool look. Yeah. Listen, I'm a firm it, believer in the fact that, like, currently superhero shit wants to take itself really seriously, and I miss when superheroes were funny. Yeah, like, but that, yeah, that's yeah. Hey. that's why I loved freaking Brave and the Bold, because, like, we can have the moment where it was where a wonderful it's, homage to Silver Age Batman. And yes. absolutely amazing. And, like, it's just like, okay, here, let's bring in Calendar Man. And, like, okay, here, you are now Calendar King. And you can summon up Your biker calendar Santa. Your calendar on calendars ends here, Calendar Man. <laughs> Bicycles, biker Santas. <laughs> it was like biker Santas and mutant bunnies, and then literally it breaks the fourth wall to Comic Con, and you literally have the image of freaking Bruce Tim and Paul Dini dressed up as Joker and Harley Quinn, while they just have this like Batman's intricate history is all about the importance that he can be so many different iterations, just for the young man crying out for the lost parents. Besides, those mutant bunnies are cool, right? Man, all right, we're keeping doing it. I love that shit. That makes me so happy. And there's uh, and then there's also the Music Meister, which is arguably one of the be best episodes of the Brave and the Bold. Oh, I, I love that one, but I will still always defend Trial of the Demon because I just love Trial the... of the Demon. Go ahead, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just love just like the interact, just like a demon. He's a hero. It's like just. Sherlock Holmes just goes through, well, it's obvious by this, and this, and this, and like, most likely some type of masked hero. The masked bat, I presume. Actually, actually, it's Batman. <laughs> Good. Like, Sherlock Holmes, how are you able to introduce my identity? The hat. <laughs> it's the hat. So fucking uh, silly. Super knowledgeable it's a, about my it's all on the hat. Arkham Knight is the cal calendar man planned to do something on Halloween before Scarecrow happened. <laughs> oh, yeah. I had all these plans. The scarecrow fucked them all up. This sucks. I hate it yep. here. It's like having a release day, and then like a triple A game comes out of that exact same time. And you're just like, God damn it. Um. But yeah. So. So now, like, there, there's two things that I have to do now. I have to like do like these small little funny jokes applying to comments and stuff like that. And then there's also, now I have to make a condiment king costume to either wear or have in the background while I'm saying I'm not condiment king. I'm not fucking condiment. I'm not condiment king! <laughs> but if I was. Originally, I was, think I was thinking about, like, remaking the, um... The Batman the Animated Series uh, Condiment King costume. However, I think it would be fun. It, it would be more fun for me if I just designed my own Condiment King costume. I think so. I mean, it's hard. I mean, it's only been like what, like two or three designs for Condiment King, because it's like yeah, there, yeah. There's not, there's not a lot of variety when it comes to Condiment King, unfortunately. Because it's like the regular Bruce Tim one that got carried over into the Harley Quinn animated series and like the Lego Movie. Then there was one yeah. that showed up actually in the comics, which was like a very patchwork design. Yeah. And I think, didn't they do one for uh, Wayne Family Adventures? Hmm. If they have, I haven't seen it yet. I'm still, I, I haven't, I haven't, I'm actually behind on Wayne Family Adventures. I gotta get caught up. Also, props to Wayne Family Adventures on Webtoons. It currently is the most read Batman comic right now i love somebody the most somebody some dickhead was like oh wayne family adventures is for people who like reading fan fiction not actual batman comics and it's like yeah have you thought about assessing the fact that if you believe that's true why is it the most read batman thing right now because it actually yeah. you wanna, it goes over like, the characters get along yeah you want to you want to like that's what i'm saying is like you want to internalize that that you're like oh it's for people who read yeah. fanfic yeah has it has it occurred to you that like Nobody's currently reading, like, regular Batman comics? Maybe think about that. Maybe think about why that might be. Yeah. Aren't you also the same guys that are currently complaining that Zack Snyder doesn't know what the fuck he's doing? Because he doesn't. Because, listen, like, no, he I doesn't, wanna... but... I also want to put Batman in situations where he'll always use a gun and kill people. Read Punisher I... comics. Or, yeah. Christ. Or read Red... Or, or, at the very least, Red Hood comics. 
Like, actually, you know what? Don't. I don't need more fucking dickheads misunderstanding Frank's character. Thank you. Yeah, like that's the actually thing. yeah. No, on yeah. the same on the same note, yeah. Don't actually read Jason Todd comics either, because Jason, because honestly, Jason Todd's more than just Batman with guns. Yeah, because like if you you want Jason Todd, read uh, Task Force Z. I love Task Force Z. Like that actually did some decent stuff with Jason. Yeah. Just go. No, just. It, it, Go fucking read the boys. Fuck. Get out of here. Go. Well, that's the thing. That can, I don't want to go into a tirade about freaking Zack Snyder. I just. I, but, I, I do. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Then we're going on about Zack Snyder. I'm just saying, like, I, I hate to be like that elitist, but like, he does not get comics. No, he, he does not. He doesn't because he doesn't care. He doesn't care about comics. He's just in it for the fucking money. The Snyderverse was not good, and people who still claim, like, bring back the Snyderverse are fucking idiots. I'll, I'll, I'll say this, like, the thing that really sh uh, encapsulated is Watchmen. It's well shot, but it doesn't get the essence of it. Like, you There's see... a reason why Alan Moore didn't like it. Yeah, because Alan Moore, like, I respect Alan Moore, but he's also like, you know, people don't understand his worries so and that. But, like, you see, you see Dr. Manhattan... Like, you know, explode someone with his finger. It's a horrifying yeah. scene. Zack yeah. Snyder sees that and just goes, cool. Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. And Zack Snyder not only not only that, he also glorified the serial killer in the Watchmen as well. The serial killer and like, okay, so the question, like, was supposed to be like this very, you know, you know, Randy and idea just like here to speak the truth that you're not willing to listen to. So Alan Moore wrote it. It's just like, okay, he's the asshole who'd be the one who'd be listening to uh, freaking Alex Jones all day long. Yeah, exactly. That's the, like, Rorschach's not a good guy. He's a psychopathic serial killer who utilizes quote unquote justice as a way to get away with fucking killing people. That's his whole thing. But Zack Snyder again said, ooh. Here's the Batman character, but he's a little bit edgier. I hate, I hate. What is Punisher's character? Pun okay, this is one of my favorite fucking things is I love talking about this. I fucking love um, reading uh, Punisher comics because like a lot of people think that Frank is a lot more of a one dimensional character than he is if cough when he's fucking written well, when people give a shit. But, like, some of Frank's, like, best and most interesting character traits are the fact that, like, he as a person does not... Like, my favorite thing, right? We've talked about this before. Uh, and this is gonna roundabout, but, like, hear me out. One of my favorite things about his dynamic with Daredevil is that, unlike a lot of other heroes, Matt is one of those people who fully understands that Frank doesn't need to be told that killing is wrong because he knows that he knows the killing is wrong he knows what he's doing is wrong he the, the thing is he doesn't care my there's something that i wanted to point i i pointed out to somebody else is that like oh he's uh like oh what was it the point was it was that i made was that frank is not a man with a cause he's a man with nothing else yeah with nothing left like the, that's that is whole that's his whole thing is that he has nothing left. One of my there's nothing left in him. One of my favorite lines in and I think it's from the Daredevil Netflix series is the what happens when someone thinks you deserve it? Well then they better not miss. Yeah. Like Ooh. Like there's not I... there's no question about it to him. Like there is no what if. No, somebody does. Somebody does think he deserves it and he doesn't fucking care. Frank's, Frank is moving pure, like, the other thing, too, is a lot of people mischaracterize, like, this is, first of all, I hate when motherfuckers try and lean on, his, like, oh, he was a war vet, it's his PTSD, no, he's gone out of his way in more than one circumstance to be like, no, I am cognizant of what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing is wrong, I just don't fucking care, do not, and, like, I, I love watching him get angry and he's like, no, you do not put that 
on me because I have brothers that I served alongside who do suffer and you are not going to use their suffering uh, as a way to not understand what I'm doing. The best, uh, one of the best iterations uh, that I've seen of that exact thing is like somebody, again, somebody trying to say on oh, PTSD and he's like, no, I am perfectly cognizant. I've seen people that, ha uh, that have this PTSD and you do nothing for them. Manslaughter doctor? I did that shit on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, like, I, and the I, only time you'll you'll look to help a veteran is e is they either have a mental breakdown and start shooting up a school. He's a, otherwise you just let them fucking become homeless. And somebody somebody said I asked because I like Punisher, but I don't understand him. That's kind of one of the reasons I like him a lot. Is Frank is a very like internal complicated character. He's a very complicated person. Uh -huh. He, has, he is a true neutral character. Right. Like, again, some of my favorite, like, unironically, I think that the Civil War comics aren't the best. One of my favorite, like, exchanges with Frank comes from the Civil War comics, where he rescues Peter, uh, who almost dies thanks to Green Goblin, brings him to the, uh, brings him to Cap's faction, takes care of them, tells them about uh, Project 42, helps them break into the Baxter building, like, does all of these things to help, because he agrees. He thinks that this is a bad idea, it's gonna get fucking innocent people killed, and he wants to protect innocent people who have nothing to do with any of this, aside from just being friends with superheroes. And yeah. then, Tony Stark recruits a bunch of villains, because he's a dumb piece of shit, and so a bunch of villains come to Captain America, and some C-listers are like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna help you, totally, and before they even finish a sentence, he just kills them. He just caps them, just shoots both of them in the head. And Cap pins him down with his shield and goes, what the fuck are you doing? And Frank looks at him and goes, you're surprised? What did, yeah. what did you think was gonna, he literally looks at him and goes, what did you think was gonna happen? Are you an idiot? Like, that I would practice restraint just because I'm with the with the biggest fucking <laughs> boy scout of the world. Are you an idiot? No, Matt's locked up. I'm not doing shit. <laughs> like, but it's it's little things. It's it's the rapport that he has with Matt because he sees that they're very similar people. It's the fact that he refuses to fight Captain America. Won't if he's an, if he's. Uh, cornered by Cap, he'll surrender. He will not fight Captain America because he has too much respect for him. He won't. Yeah. Like, Frank. But it will is... be not be that one time I fucking hate Secret Empire. Me too. I, but I fucking I love Frank's character because he's a very complicated. Like I said, he's a very complicated person. He he does things for himself because he's. Truly, I think something that not a lot of people understand is that by now, in a lot of his best stories, Frank has processed his grief. And he knows that what he's doing isn't for Maria for uh, or his kids. He He's doing it for him because he's angry. And while he's processed his grief, he has not processed the anger. And I think that's interesting because Frank... Frank Castle is inherently an incredibly good, kind-hearted person, but he is somebody who has been living on nothing but spite and anger for so long that he doesn't know another way to live anymore. I think I think one way that I can kind of parallel uh, have a parallel to it is like, did you watch the Castlevania Netflix series? Yeah. Yeah. Like you know oh, how like uh... have you not or no I had, no. Actually, that was, I was going to say that that's like the only thing so far that I am a little bit familiar with because I did try to watch Castlevania, the, ne the Netflix. Yeah. But that's the thing, because like with like Dracula on his whole kind of like campaign, he's not doing this over like like vice or revenge. Like he's doing this just out of just like emptiness. The only thing he ever cared about is gone. So he's just doing this thing just to fulfill the emptiness. And like not in the sense of like just depression and more just like, you know, everything is gone like that's it it's just like just blind following of a path of like frank and, still i i think frank and bruce have a lot in common in that they are people who are functioning about with a desire to uh 
uh, with a powerful desire to make sure that nobody else has to suffer that way. Nobody else has to hurt the way they hurt. The difference is that Frank is damaged, fundamentally, and he refuses to take a step back and reassess that. I just, I, I love that. I think that's really cool. I think that a lot of his themes are tremendously interesting to me. Uh, it's why, it's why consistently I find that the street level heroes are the ones I like the most. You have terrible timing. I'm literally about to go raid somebody. <laughs> that very interesting. Also, also not like death joke because Punisher's not a pedophile. <sighs> so I'm going to send you over to Smog Teeth since all of our commissions are done. So... Couple of quick notes. Reminder, if you, uh, we'll do, I'll just do real quick. Wait, shit. Uh, if you want to purchase commissions of your own and be one of the ones I draw next week, uh, then there is the card. The slots for next week's stream are open until, obviously until Wednesday, because I have to, uh, do the sketches before stream. Um, those are going to be open until, again, until MomoCon, so until around April, May. Um, we are not, there is no more streams this week. There's no stream tomorrow, and there's not going to be a stream Saturday, because again, I have a friend coming in, I'm going to be out touching grass, uh, so there's not going to be any streams for the rest of the week. Uh, so I will see all of you back here on Tuesday. So for now, I hope you enjoy your long weekend, for me anyway. Goodbye! Catch you later!